What is happening, Big Brown Breakdown listeners? It is this lovely Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon, it's noon. Exactly, it's noon. Uh, In Los Angeles, California. Gorgeous outside as usual. I'm in LA for one day. Mm Mm-hmm. One day, fresh off the plane from New York, uh, where I was doing work for E! Entertainment and the Grammys. Hopefully, some of you guys watched it. Most of my crowd is bros, so hopefully your girls force you to watch it. If you did, I appreciate you guys. Um, busy out there, man. Flew into New York, then took a car. It took me two hours to get to the Jersey Shore in New Jersey, where I shot uh, my first piece for this project, which hopefully, if all goes well, I will be able to make an official announcement this week. I'm pretty excited about that. It's a big one for me. It was my first day shooting for it. So that was in Jersey, and then uh, came back from Jersey. Took me another two hours to get to Manhattan from Jersey. Traffic in New York is like nothing I've ever seen, man. Everyone goes, LA's worse. LA, no, it's not. Stop with that. New York's worse. Way worse. Oh, damn. You, have you ever been to New York? I've been there, but I don't remember crazy. It's traffic. because, like, imagine downtown during rush hour all the time, though. 24 7, 12 a.m., 12 p.m., it's like that. Mm. It's just, and it's, it, there's so many people, it's so congested, and there's taxis it's everywhere. I like New York. I'm not the biggest New York guy. I can get why people. Love it, but it's not, you know, it's not my cup of tea. I need to spread my wings. You mean in the city then, right? Like not Just in the ways, city, yeah. not outside. It, okay. You know, if, obviously rush hour is rush hour in anywhere. Atlanta's awful. Toronto rush hour is awful. Denver rush hour is awful. L.A. rush hour is awful. But as far as just 24-7 traffic, yeah. there's nothing like New York. Gotcha. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I got New Yorkers arguing with me all the time about it. When I'm in New York, I'm like, God, dog, but... The New Yorkers are smart because they use the subway system for everything. Yeah, they don't have cars, a lot of them. Mm-mm. It's crazy. Which I tell, you know, with Showtime or with E, whenever I'm in New York, I'm like, let me just take the subway, man. I'll get there half the time. They're like, no, because we need to make sure. I'm like, well, I should be all right. Hopefully I can fend for myself if someone acts up on the train. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I'm not a Ninja Turtle. I don't understand the subway system yet. But it's kind of confusing. It's so confusing for me. How about when we were with Brian? Last time I was there. No, not last time. Last time I was there with Brian doing a Firing the Kid at Gramsci Theater. (laughs) It's me, my brother, Shark Eyes Doll Smile, him, and our friend Jason. And uh, Brian grew up in New York. Don't get it twisted. Brian's been in New York forever. The longest period of time where he's lived is New York besides here. Obviously, as a grown-ass man. But we're like, oh, we'll take the train. Brian's like, I know it like the back of my hand. <laughs> this fool had us in Queens. Then we jumped over to another borough. He had no idea what he's doing. Then finally, we're like, where, dude, we've been on the train for two hours. What the fuck? You turn around and went, I actually don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I can imagine that, dude. <laughs> so frustrating. But, um, and I've also, I, I did in New Jersey. And listen, uh, I think it's called Kings, the pizza in Kings in New York. Amazing. Uh, artichoke pizza, amazing. It's all great. In LA, uh, Justa and um, Jelena's Takeaway, amazing pizza. But as far as, the, if I had to put it pound for pound, best slice I've ever had, New Jersey. New Jersey. I think it's called JR's Pizza, where I was at. That's JR's, New Jersey. JR's, JR's Jersey Shore. This slice of pie was so goddamn delicious. And my stomach's better. So it's all, it's all gravy, baby. <laughs> and what else is crazy about um, my stomach is, uh, if you guys don't know, I was throwing up. I was, my body was too acidic because I was drinking so much goddamn coffee and not eating and my diet and all that and stress and work and going through buying a house. So all of it just added up and I was just throwing up. Not like all the time. And I appreciate everyone sending me the messages and stuff you went through. I love you guys. Um, some of you are so far off, but I still love you for sending me that stuff. Um, and the the one thing, you know, I don't hate on doctors, but they always want to just give you a prescription. You go, oh, here you go, do this. And it's like, God, I don't know what that stuff's going to do to my body. It's so toxic. It, it must be hard on my liver. So I was using the medication the doctor gave me, but the one thing the doctor did tell me, obviously, coffee. I stopped doing that on my own. I don't need a doctor to tell me that. But the other thing, and she told me I need to figure it out, and this is where I'm reaching out to my my bro science 
weed heads out there <laughs> is I was using a CBD oil spray. Oh, yeah. My boy from uh, uh, Speedweed or uh, Sp- I think it's Speedweed. It's LA Speedweed or something. Yeah, LA yeah. Speedweed. Gino, my boy, hit me up, man. If you're seeing this, I'm sure people are going to tell you, uh, hit me up. But the spray, I was using the cinnamon spray, mm-hmm. CBD oil to sleep at night. And plus, it, if you have had brain trauma, it's supposed to help with that. Um, so I was using that every night to shut down and because I can't shut down my brain. It goes a million miles an hour. I want to do all this stuff. So I was using that spray, and she, the doctor goes, we've had some cases where that's one of the reasons you're thrown up, too. And she goes, I think you can't just say that's the one culprit, but the coffee, the the fasting, your work, uh, just overload, mm-hmm. you know, and then traveling. but And then you mix in that. Some people with, from that spray and the, the marijuana, the CBD, it's, it's, it's causing you to throw up. Wow. So I stopped doing that, stopped doing coffee. I've gotten more busier, but I, I haven't been thrown up. That's really good. I know. So what do you drink now? They then? figured out. So now um, I've stopped taking the prescription the doctor gave me because, again, I just the medication stuff, man. I, I don't know what's doing to my liver and those pills suspect. So um, and this this isn't a pitch. Obviously, I've been with on it, ride and die for forever. But um, Aubrey Marcus, I called him and he sent me a list of all the stuff that I can get at uh, Irwan. And it was like a list of all organic stuff in these pills. And then it was like so much shit. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. And then he goes, uh, and we'll all send you the total gut health. You might be able to just take that and that'll clear it up. He goes, it's some of the best stuff. And I've been taking total gut health. I've been drinking this kombucha, better booch kombucha. They look like they're based out of Cali. Not a sponsor. This is not a sponsor. But I think there's small, like, Mom pop kombucha, but the probiotics in this, yeah, I think so. Yeah, can Better distributed Booch. by Better Booch, Los Angeles, California. Shout out to Better Booch again, not a sponsor. I have no affiliate with them. I don't know who they are. Uh, hopefully, they're not murderers or pedophiles mm-hmm. or some shit like that. But they are out of L.A. and I've been drinking their uh, kombucha. So you mix that with the uh, total gut health. Boom, baby. I'm back. Still no coffee. I've been balls deep in tea. Uh, Herba, uh, what do they call it? Herba, you know, Herba Mat, Herbal Mat tea, Herbal Mate tea. It has caffeine in it. So I'm getting matcha? My, I don't Not think it's matcha. matcha. I, I'll matcha. fuck with some matcha, but I can't have sugar, like a ton mm-hmm. of sugar. Um, but I'll, I'll mess with that. It's a special kind of tea, man. But there's caffeine in it. There's like 150 milligrams. Of it. There it is. Oh, this Herba one. mate. Yeah, son. I think there's 150 milligrams of caffeine in it. So I'm still getting my caffeine, son. Not as much, <laughs> but I'm good, guys. I appreciate all your all your concern. You guys are literally the best. The best. Um, and I got my blood result back from the doc. Everything's A-OK. Everything was all good. They ran Perfect. everything. So blood works OK. The one thing, though, I'm in the early stages of pre-diabetic. What? <laughs> Because your family, my grandpa had it, my dad has it, my uh, uncles have it. Damn. So one in fifty percent chance. But she goes, you know, just because it's so prevalent in your family, you work out so much and you do eat mm-hmm. healthy. She goes, it's it's just you know, it's you're the first stage, so you're all right. But if you were to let yourself go or something like that, diabetes are gonna kick in, son. Shit. Damn, dude. Just don't let yourself go. It should be all right. So as long as you don't let yourself go, it does. It, yeah, it won't, it I should be up. good. It, it, a lot of stress could make it worse. Yeah. A lot of stress and bad eating could make it worse. Man, that's so that's what happened to my papa. My papa went through a divorce, went bankrupt, and then then he got it like thirty something. At thirty something, he was like Jeez. thirty, like my age when he got it because he went through a divorce with my mama. Yeah, and then um, he's going. Was he bankrupt. in shape and all that too? At yeah, that my time? dad's always in shape. Yeah, hmm. he's always in shape. He eats pretty well. He does the the dad science of eating well. Like, you need your protein, and he'll give me, like, potatoes and cheese. I'm like, all right, well, all right, that doesn't count. <laughs> there is man. some protein. All right, there. yeah, I guess. But the dad science, everyone knows dad science. I love it. Wait, so uh, are you going to go back to coffee or not? Uh, so this is my thing with coffee, and I was going to launch my own coffee company, and I had everything in the works, and literally all I had to do was sign the contract, and it, that we're going to launch this thing. It's tough for me because – you guys can relate to this. You ever been out and let's say you drank tequila with your friends. You got chocolate wasted, white girl wasted off tequila. Mm. And then you smell tequila the next day. You're like, oh, hell no. Like it gives you that. Yeah. That's how I am with coffee. Oh, crap. I can't like, 
I went to uh, it's called Ma- Mad Men Coffee in New York. It was, it's my spot where I go to all the all the time. And I was just getting tea there, but I thought and it was right before I was doing the Grammys, the pre-show. And I was kind of tired. I usually work out, which I did in my hotel room. Did a workout in my undies in the hotel room, turned the heat up. So I had a nice sweat on. I'm like, a little caffeine could be good, man, from coffee. I'll try it. So I got a cortada, took one sip. And I was like, oh, fuck. It's like so my body just goes, nope, no, 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 no. Very weird. I know, man. That was your life. I so know. That's crazy. Life. Coffee. Yeah. I, I was taking IVs of coffee before <laughs> yeah, I did any, anything coffee. Coffee, coffee. I had my own coffee coming. So give it a couple months. I'm sure I'll be back, but I feel good. I feel good. In LA one day, back on the road. I'm in Denver, my hometown. First time doing stand-up in my hometown. Been there with Brian for Fire and Kid, but not obviously not the what I'm doing now, which is just full stand-up. So um, it's interesting, man. I got to be honest. I'm a little nervous about doing stand-up. When you write stand-up or you do stand-up, it's not really for your family and friends, like the people that know you, you know? It's really not. Like, I roast my dad a little bit in my set. My dad's never seen in person. <laughs> roast my mom a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm you were super about. honest, too, in some of the shows we did. Like, really honest. I was tripping out, too. We'll so, see. <laughs> I can't imagine if we'll they We'll see how did. that goes. Yeah. But uh, Thursday night show sold out. Wednesday night, there are, f- I think, 30 tickets left. So, let's sell that bitch out, Denver. Hometown, come and get it. Comedy Works, yeah. downtown Denver. Some regard as the best club in America. We'll see. I've never been there as a performer. I've been there as a fan, which obviously come up in Denver being a fan of comedy. I've been there a bunch of times. So should be fun, man. Should be fun. What else is interesting is, <clears throat> and I, I need to reach out to him. I've been so busy, but um, I just haven't got around to it. A guy I played football with in college, J.J. Billingsy. He was an amazing football player, high school legend from Eagle Crest, um, amazing player. Then we both went to CU together. Amazing player at CU. I think he had, I went to camp with the Saints in the NFL, but if he didn't have injuries, you're talking, I mean, as far as talent-wise, top two or three guys I've ever played with. Just a complete freak. Uh, I think he was captain of the team one year, but then he got hurt. Anyways, um, but he's doing stand-up now, around, look around oh, Denver. Crazy. Yeah, but he's been doing it for a while. And Sean Tufts, who runs the CU alum program, shout out to Sean Tufts, who was a captain of our team at CU, reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, JJ's doing stand-up. Um, I don't know if there's anything he can do to help him, stuff like that. So, And I need to reach out to him soon because like, the show is tomorrow. Yeah. But I'm, I'm think- and I've seen some of his stuff. I want him to like MC the shows. I think that'd be cool. That'd be badass, yeah. dude. So I, I really, I, I should take a break now. Take him, but I'll wait. Right I'll wait. I'll wait till we're done with the show. But uh, it'd be cool to have him MC the shows. Yeah, that's awesome. Be like dude. full circle. Yeah. yeah, way back in the day, friend. Yeah, that's awesome. Super old school. So, um, yeah, shout out to JJ Billings. He keep doing it, man. Uh, hopefully, I see him this weekend. But it's gonna be fun, man. It'll be fun. And I'm then I go Wednesday night Denver, Thursday night Denver, Friday, Saturday, St. Louis. Two shows each night in St. Louis, and then traveling Sunday, Super Bowl day, and I, I think I land like right before kickoff. Mm. Where to? Actually there? Uh, no, I'll, I'll be in L.A. for the Super uh, Bowl, hopefully. Cool. Hopefully I get home in time to see the Super Bowl. I do True. love the Super Bowl. Do you watch Super Bowl or no? Does your family watch it or no? My friends watch it. You don't really get into it? I, I sometimes don't even go. It's kind of a social event, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of like it's almost like the the comparison be like the the remember like a obviously I was gonna say Mayweather Mac, but that was a little different. That was like a whole spectacle, right? But it's almost like a big like a triple G Canelo fight. Like even if you're not into boxing, it's such a big event. Yeah, you're gonna even if you you don't know shit about them, you're gonna tune in or your friends are gonna throw a party. Like yeah, I might as well go. Yep. So for and sure, go to a lot of friends watch it just for commercials. Of just for the commercials. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people have watching parties just for commercials. <clears throat> wow, that's interesting. Because the commercials are, you know, super badass. They're totally expensive, big budget. Yeah, it's like, what is it, like something $10 million a minute or something like that? Something like that. I yeah. forget what it is exactly. It, it, it goes up every year. Time. Is it? It was around $5 million a minute last time. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn. Um, yeah, they're always good. They're always good. I, used to, I love the Super I used to watch my dad every year, and obviously since I move, haven't been able to do it. But... uh yeah, we traveling during the Super Bowl. Hopefully, I make it in time. Hopefully, I make it in time. Other than that, man, life is good. Life is good. Should we get into it? 
sure. lot going on. The, uh, I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, some of the stuff I talked about last week with the super fights and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it sounds like it's coming to fruition, which is, which is cool, man. I got a, a message earlier today from DC, which is so weird. You know, um, whatever you guys believe in, whatever religion or whatever, but you know, when you're thinking about someone and then they reach out to, then they text you, yeah. it's almost, it's weird to me, but I was after, so I was at DC's fight in Boston and I never text someone at, directly after the fight because I've been there and you get a million texts. You kind of just go through them and you, you're dealing with it. You just want to see your family. You're like, all right, cool. I'll get back to them. And you usually forget. So I, and it's just a lot to take in. So I never text anyone right after a fight. You usually do it like a week or two after. And like two days. And I, so I remember I was like, oh, I got to reach out to DC because I was so inspired and just kind of proud of him, what he went through. And, you know, with the John Jones loss, he could have let that define him. Then he comes in, he fights Uzdemir and does work. And then you can just tell it was so heartfelt. And I, I feel like he's slowly becoming the superstar that he deserves to be. I feel like the fans are finally catching on to his realness. He's not fake and he's not this bad guy. And, you know, he's not this paper champion. He is going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. And they're finally starting to grasp it. And we see him for who he is. And there's no gimmicks. And we're in this super fight entertainment age of the UFC. And he doesn't really play into that role. So, you know, some he used to come out and he would get booed and John would get yeah. celebrated, even though John broke a pregnant lady's arm. And, you know, yeah, he beat DC, but there's just all this kind of weird negativity when it came to DC. And then, you know, he's on UFC tonight. He does a great job, but that's that's not going to be a game changer for you. UFC tonight's not big enough to, to win you over. But then when he started doing commentating with Rogan and – I'm always a little skeptical when they put guys in there right away. I'm like, all right, I know he's the champ. Like sometimes you look at UFC tonight and you're like, all right, is that is that the best panel possible, or are you just trying to check off the boxes? We get it, UFC tonight, Fox. You're not racist. We get it. You have an all black oh. panel. We get. Whoa, we get it. We get it, man. You know, are is are now? I'm gonna ask again. Are those the best brains and speakers for the art to the general audience? Depends. Depends on the night. Depends on the panel they have. Typically not. So when I see DC, I thought, all right, champ, he's a friendly guy. He's had so much experience, Olympian. There's not a whole lot. You know, he's he's all right on the mic. He's not great as far as after the fights. And then he does commentate with Rogan. I was blown away, man. Blown, blown away. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Besides Rogan, he's by far your best. By far. Not even close. He's real. He's genuine. He's just, he's damn good at it. And I think that's, that, along with people, actually, he's not playing a character. He's being DC, and that's slowly coming about. So this whole DC run I just went on, he texted me today. And it's so weird, because I, I remember I woke up, and I keep telling myself, uh, make sure you reach out to DC. Like, I'll do these little check marks during the morning. Like, make sure you reach out to DC, because I'm just, I just want to tell proud of him and his moment. It's great and what he's doing. And he reached out to me. It's so weird. Awesome. It's so strange, man. When you think about them, it kind of, I don't know. I don't know how that works. The universe, universe is crazy, man. <laughs> universe is crazy. Well, let's get into it, man. What do you got? Well, what did he say? Say. Oh, just, um, you know, he saw some of the Grammy stuff and how, um, you know, congrats, you're killing it, man. Everyone's awesome. so proud of you here. And it's just cool, wow. man. Yeah. You guys both wanted to compliment each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. All right. The first one, we already heard a few days ago that there was possibly a Michael Bisping versus Rashad Evans for his retirement fight in London. And I guess Ariel tweeted it out that it was being discussed, but not finalized yet. And then today, Bisping said that it's not happening. Good for Bisping. He actually tweeted out, don't buy tickets to see me fight in London. I'm not fighting. Just spoke with UFC. Yeah, it was was too big. First of all, uh, I'm sorry. It was too, too soon for him to fight. I like that I was in London for him, obviously on a on a you know kind of a send off fight. The Rashad fight, that's fine. We saw him fight before, went to a draw. Not the best fight you've ever seen, but you know, they're both older now, so it could be a fun fight with two vets. Um but it's just too it's it was just too soon. Too soon. I don't want to see him as family and friends, I don't want to see him as coaches, I don't want to see him. So um the tricky thing for the UFC, how are you gonna announce a fight card without a main event? I'm not buying that. What if you give me the Charlotte card? Or what if you give me the Orlando card? For the, those are awful, man, awful, awful. And I, I don't know what they're doing with the Fox cards, but you look at them like last week's card. 
or you look at the, these other cards and the, the Orlando one, it's just like, what is going on? Remember those Fox cards used to be either contenders or superstars to get the draws. If you remember, they they, they had Kane J, JDS on there. They had Travis Brown for Doom on there. That was with title eliminator. They had these huge fights on there. And when I think about it, it and, it, you know, Last weekend's card, lowest ratings ever on Fox. Big Fox, by the way. We're not talking about FS1, which is, you know, the redheaded stepchild. We're talking about Big Fox here. So when those ratings are that low, you know, Fox is not happy with that. And I thought to myself, who controls that? These these cards are, you know, if that was on Fight Pass, people are like, I guess I'll tune in, let alone Fox. Um, and I wonder, since they're going through this contract negotiations with Fox, if is this, I feel like it's one of two things. WME and Dana White either are flexing on him going, you guys want to play rough? You want to see what happens? If we, if you don't do this, watch this, let us show you how shitty can get. So we've gotten these numbers for you. And we've gotten these play ball with this, or we're, we're just going to, we're just going to shit this year. You know, it's basically like, uh, when a, a football team or basketball team goes, all right, we're just going to dive during these games to get that first round pick. It will show that they should give you a shit product. So I don't know if that's what the UFC is doing to kind of flex on Fox because they're the only dog in town because Amazon's out, ESPN's out, Showtime's out. All, name another company. Facebook's out. Twitter's out. Fox is the only guy that in town that's willing to want to play. So when you have no one to kind of raise the bar and bounce off and forth and negotiate, you know, no competition is bad, bad, bad when you're looking for a TV deal. So I don't know if it's that or is it WME just doesn't give a fuck. They're just like, mm, book whatever you want, man. Whatever you want. We don't know. It's whatever. And are they doing this and then they just count their losses and then the, and then the Fertitta brothers come in and get the business at a fucking – deal the for the, the fertitas go all right cool man we made our money it's not going well for you obviously don't know what you're doing we'll take it from here Interesting. but we need half the price that we pay that you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> that wouldn't be a bad business move about theory you know i don't know what's going on they're too they, listen they're too smart to put these cards out and not expect these numbers they're way too smart for this okay you look and then you look at the the July card, and they they saved the ones for their pay per view, which is what UFC makes their nut on. So, you know, you look at that July card. Is that Tim Flex and going? See, we can do both. We can give you a horrible product, meaning no superstars, no draw at all, or we can we can stack it and do this. How do you want to play it, man? We we can still we can go both ways. I feel like they're too smart just to put out this half ass effort that they're doing lately. It's for it has to be for a reason. I hope so. Or again, we're on the Titanic. This bad boys are going down. I don't know. I wish I knew. But um, I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're too smart. They didn't get this far and realize that those ratings were going to be awful this past Saturday night. Since you're already on it, I mean, so it is overnight-wise the, the lowest Fox ever out of the 27 cards. What do you think was going to happen? Again, it's not – no one's bashing Jacare or – or Brunson, they're amazing fighters, talented fighters. They're they're studs, man. They're superstars yeah. in the fight world. But as far as being, you know, on Fox stuff like that, come on, come on, man. The show strong on action, but weak on star power. Did one point five. Yeah, twenty one percent drop for the same show last year. Thirty five percent drop from two years ago. Make it the worst that. Uh, this is the UFC's contract that she appeared with current Fox deal expiring at the end of this year. I just don't get it, man. The previous low mark was 1.64 million viewers with Weidman over Gaslam. Interesting. Um, this also comes two weeks after the Jeremy Stevens Doho Choi fight did the biggest Fox Sports 1 night ratings in almost two years. It's Fox Sports 1 ratings, so again, that's not... So that's like saying Brendan got a silver medal in the Special Olympics. Um, for comparison, last year's January show headlined by Shevchenko's win over Julian Pan did 2.2. Wow, that's surprising. That is surprising, man. I don't know. It, it, it could be also the next Fox, the next UFC on Fox R is Josh Emmett versus Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens, love him. Josh Emmett, we just found out about him. You know, he, he just had that huge win. Mm-hmm. Um for him to headline a Fox card, 
I, I just, I don't know what's going on, man. I th- hopefully it's calculated. Or again, these little cracks going to start sinking this big ass ship. And then you're, then you're hitting that fucking glacier when those TV deals are up and you don't have anyone. You're like, uh, well, I guess we'll just put everything on Fight Pass. That's all we can do. I don't know. It's scary shit, man. What else you got? If it was like a calculated move from these guys and Lorenzo, who do you think is the wiser of this gameplay? Like, I don't know because they're both super smart teams, right? Uh, the Fertitas would be the smarter bunch in the in the group um, as, far, as far as pure businessmen because WME has so much more going on, such bigger things that is this the is this a side project? Yeah, is this a side it. chick? You know, um, I don't. Are they taking it serious? Are they even aware that? Are, have they even heard of Bloody Elbow? Are, are they even aware what's going on? Do, have they heard of MMA fighting? Are, are they aware, aware, aware of this subculture that we call mixed martial arts? Or do they have any conscious, you know, kind of recognition of what exactly is happening to their business? It's heartbreaking, man. It's horrible. The product you guys are putting out from what we're used to is crazy. <laughs> the Stevens Emmett one's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> yeah, and I, the guy, I love Jeremy Stevens, but Josh Emmett, headline your card? It's a trip. He, again, talented guy. However, it's crazy. I don't know, man. <laughs> what else you got? All right. Floyd Mayweather is back in the news again. So for the last two days, yesterday, he posted this picture of uh, Conor McGregor and him. Him punching This actually Connor. goes in there. Let me refresh this real quick. So it's just him and Connor. His, his hashtag MCM, Man Crush Monday. It says Mayweather crushes McGregor. It's so weird. I don't know why he doesn't get over it. So that was yesterday. And then today, he posts this video of him just casually walking into a MMA cage. Where's no, this? No description at all. Oh, he's at Syndicate in Las Vegas. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's going on with Floyd Mayweather right now. He's just teasing it. Oh, my God. What is? What in the world are we doing? What are we doing? They posted and then, that $100 million check. This was before check. that, yeah. Oh, man. I just... I don't know what to make of it. I don't want to see him fight in the UFC. Really? You do? Just I mean, if it was... Yeah, just to get... Just because he, you know, you know what? How about what boxing. about him and CM Punk? And he beat CM Punk. That would be the craziest. It'd be the like biggest pairing. shit. Show. Yeah, it'd be the biggest shit show for sure. Again, when we're, we're in this WME world, so I, I don't put it past them. They're talking about CM Punk getting another fight. I I do know that if he did fight CM Punk <clears throat> or McGregor, I'm sure all of us would be. Watching. We tune in and yeah. hit ratings. Hey, McGregor versus him in uh, in the UFC in a mixed martial arts fight. I mean, that's that that'd be super silly for him. Super yeah. super silly. He's okay. he's not that dumb. He's just he's just trying to stay relevant. He's just trying to be in the news. That's, that's, what that's I all think he's doing. Him. He, he's a he's a he's a celebrity. He's a promoter. That, that's all he's doing. You'll never see him in the UFC octagon. I'll tell you what. Maybe it's because I just watched that movie Battle of the Sexes. I was thinking today, what do, what do you do with CM Punk? And there's there's not a man on the roster that does not walk through him in under a minute. Um, so what do you do with him? You're you're obviously going to give him another fight. Is he a ratings draw? I don't think so. I think you know there there's that mystery where like God, how would he do? Then we saw like oh my God, that was awful. It was so bad. You don't want to see him fight again. The hardcore fans go, all right, if he's going to take another one, we'll tune in. Let's see if he made any improvement. We don't expect much out of him. So you're definitely not paying for that on a pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'd put on a Fox if, Jesus Christ, what they're putting on Fox these days. So maybe you put on a Fox. What about a Cyborg? What about, a, what you know, Cyborg? What if you do a Battle of the Sexes? What about this whole Me Too movement? And you, you put one for the ladies. You let Cyborg knock his fucking head off. She really would, too. She All would right. knock his fucking head off. What about that? Yeah, I got to draw the line somewhere. But but, but uh, why not do it? I mean, you know, you're, you're having a tough enough time. You're trying to make these super fights, and you, you want to 
kind of jump on this whole bad wagon of this Me Too movement and, uh, you know, we, we care about women and stuff like that. Let Cyborg fight uh, CM Punk. See how that goes for him. Even Amanda Nunes. Even, ah, God, man. Uh, I mean, oh, I feel like a Rose, a Thug Rose, even a uh, Yun Jun Chek would put it on him. But look, do the Battle of the Sexes thing. I don't know if you'd get it cleared by any commission in the world. Maybe take your ass to China and do it. Japan. Do it in Japan. Bet Brazil wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, they actually have Battle of the Sexes in Brazil. Just an idea. I, 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 there's not a man on the roster who does not beat him in any weight class. So I don't know what you do with him to, to make it compelling. So I was thinking, what would draw the biggest ratings? I did just watch Battle of the Sexes. No one's ever done something like that. There's this huge women movement going on right now, which everyone's supporting. All right. Feed him to Cyborg. See those ratings. I hear your point. Does he sign up for that fight? Probably not, because it'd be so his last fight was embarrassing enough. So if you go in there and you get just dealt with by a girl. But how much you know, you get paid, son. You get paid. Would that destroy the UFC? No. I think it actually helps it. I think what they're doing is destroying. I think painting him as a legit fighter, painting him, giving him another shot is ruining them. So let's use his platform to boost the business. Let's do Battle of the Sexes. And some people are listening going out, Shab, you're out your goddamn mind. Am I? <laughs> CM Punk's fighting. He, he's 0-1 last time. He ran straight at the dude and didn't land a punch and got destroyed by a guy who only had three fights. It's crazy we're even entertaining him fighting again. So if you're going to do it, let's make sure we capitalize on his stardom and boost somebody here or at least get... You know, if, if you're going to get the WWE fan base, why not? You think all the mainstream media would jump on that Battle of the Sexes? This whole Me Too movement. I think that would be counterproductive, though. You think? Yeah. Why? Let, let Paige Van Zandt get a hold of them. It's weird because Cyborg would actually win, right? And would Cyborg would beat him win. in 45 yeah. seconds. So that's where it gets weird, but I mean. Why? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to see in this day and age a female beat the shit out of a male? And you have freaking Rose McGowan. You have uh, one of the girls, uh, Louis C.K., pulled his dick out, walked out with her. You have uh, someone, Harvey Weinstein, you know, tortured. You have one of the girls that uh, homeboy in Vegas who's blind, who owns all the hotels, come out. You know what I'm saying? Win. You have one of Steve Wynn's victims come out, walk behind her. What? <laughs> God. You're welcome, UFC. I, tr- I know I sound crazy. <laughs> do. do I? Yeah. All right. A little bit. What else are you going to do with them? Why not capitalize on this I, women's I movement? Totally you have all though. the victims walk out with Cyborg, and she beats the brakes off him in front of everybody. Name one media outlet that wouldn't pick that up. Name one. It's true. It would be all over. And then she doesn't even get on the mic. You have one of the victims get on the mic. <laughs> They're wearing white roses, or we all dress in black. Mm. Just saying, man, what else are you going to do with them? <laughs> Feed Cyborg. Or, again, done, all right, you don't want to do Cyborg? Do it, give her Rose. Give them uh, Joanna, Claudia Gadeja, uh Carolina, any of those. Michelle Watterson, give him Karate Hottie, Paige Van Zandt. All those girls walk through him. Hate to tell you. Battle of the sexes. If you want it competitive, give him one of the straw weights. If you want him to get murked, if you want to give him murk, give him a bantam weight. If you want to get real freaky, give him a feather weight. <laughs> it's just an idea, man. Trying to sell tickets or not. <laughs> You know, how, where do we draw the line at? I know. I know this sounds crazy, man. Where do we draw the line at? They're, they already went crazy, so I'm jumping on the crazy train. They're like those surf turtles in uh, fucking Nemo going down that crazy lane. Like, dude, come on. I watch a lot of cartoons because of my son. So <laughs> the, we're going down that. If we're going down that crazy lane, I'm into it. Just watch Battle of the Sexes. You need a marketing. You need a pitch. There you go. Good luck in sanction, though. But again, you guys are the one that brought this sh- circus on, not me. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas here. If you're gonna do it, go all the way. Hell yeah, yeah. go all the way. We got this whole women's movement going on. Jump on board that. Everyone's gonna support it. If you're gonna give them another shot, 
Where do, where do you stop at with the circus act? I heard Morgan Freeman did Taekwondo in fourth grade. You want to sign him up? Want his old ass up in there? I don't. But well, I don't watch. All right. CM Punk's no different than those guys. CM Punk is a celebrity who, who's obsessed with UFC. I know a ton of them. Demi Lovato actually trains. She probably has more training before CM Punk took his first fight than CM Punk. She's a badass. You want to sign her up? She's bigger drawn than CM Punk. Where do we stop at? Pink's a bad, bad girl, man. Pink's a tough girl. She trains. You want to put her in there? Like, where do you stop this yeah. line at? I hear you. All I'm saying, Battle of the Sex is 2018. <laughs> this Me Too movement, it would be a banger. You're welcome. It'd be a winner for the women, right? Yes. Cyborg just going crazy. Yes. Doesn't, and it doesn't have to be Cyborg. Pick whoever you want. You want Yoana to piece them up? You want Yoana to give them a facelift? Boom. Should do it. You know what kind of eyeballs we're going to get on that thing? What else you got? <laughs> it got weird. It got weird. If you guys want it, you get. You ask for it. All right. The Rock announced that Canelo versus Triple G, the rematch, is, the date is set. They're actually doing it. And uh, you want me to just play this real quick? Sure. Because it was a really this. cool way of doing this. It goes down right here in the West Coast Iron Paradise. Now, a lot of you guys know the love and respect that I have for the sweet science, the sport of boxing. So when HBO called I did not know. Rock, we want you to make an announcement to the world for one of the biggest boxing matches of all time. I said I'd be honored, but I got to do it my way. They said you got it. So world here is the historic announcement from the jabroni beating, pie eating, trailblazing, eyebrow raising. 12 rounds wasn't enough. The world is going to see the rematch to settle it all. Canelo versus Triple G. <laughs> is this pretty cool, dude? That was sick. Yeah. I bet they paid that man handsomely oh, yeah. for that. You get two million views off the bat. Yes! Bring it! Hell yeah. Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin 2. May 5th only on HBO pay-per-view. And I guarantee you it ain't going to be another draw. It goes... Uh, you can't guarantee that, sir. Know, right? But most... most Likely than not, you're right, but you can't guarantee that. Remember, it's boxing. It's crooked as fuck. Man, that's a great way to promote, though. Indeed. Great way to promote. Shout out to HBO for that. Then Golden Boy put out, this time they won't leave it up to the judges. Maybe not. <laughs> Probably, though. Probably. Everyone's like, I guarantee. Well, we thought that last time. I did call that um, Triple G was going to get fucked over, though. Um, you did. I'm excited for that, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I'll tell you the one fight up that's more exciting than that one, though. Anthony and Joshua Wilder. If, they, if Showtime get that done by the end of the year, if they both win, if Joshua beats Parker mm. and then Wilder beats Ortiz, two tough, tough fights. If they can pull that off, boom, you get an October, an October super fight of those heavyweights. Probably in London. Wilder's probably going to have to go to London, but. Yeah, jo um, yeah. Anthony Joshua said he wouldn't fight in the States still. Nope, he no. only fights in London. I got super skeptical hippo eyes. Interesting. <laughs> That's that, man. Uh, what else you got? <laughs> Let's look at this. Oh, so this is just what we were talking about yesterday, that Robert Whitaker did post on Instagram after that whole scare about his intestines and staff, and he said he's back to training right now. For sure, don't post a picture with your right hand down and overextend with your jab and your left and your right foot off the ground. But whatever, <laughs> whatever. I'm just glad he's back. Pumped to get back to work. We'll be back stronger than ever. Yeah, that's great, man. So that means, you know, uh, the rock cold Yo Romero winner will definitely fight him, which is what you want. You don't want to shit show him out forever. So perfect, man. Love cool. it. Whitaker's a bad man. Bad, bad man. Actually, he should be the favorite over any of those guys as well. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so Eddie Alvarez had a theory he was on MMA Hour, and the theory that the reason why Connor's not being stripped. Have you heard this theory yet? I have not. All right. I, what I what I do before you get in this, what I, mm -hmm. I do like is Eddie Alvarez, one of my favorite people in the UFC, but also Eddie Alvarez is a guy who um you know, he's a Philly guy. He's an underground king. So remember when Nate Diaz put out that shit and then, you know, and then Eddie Alvarez was like, let's do it. And then Nate Diaz's friend reached out to him and was like, hey, he doesn't really, he's just waiting for Connor. Mm -hmm. And then Eddie just went ham on him. I was like, you fucking bitch. Like, you want to do all this stuff? 
I don't blame Nate for that <clears throat> at all. If I'm Nate, and let's say I only realistically probably has one fight left in him, I probably wait for Connor just to make that another seven payday. Because if he fights an Eddie Alvarez, if he fights a Khabib, if he fights a Tony, he's not making uh, half a million dollars. It's not a draw. In order for this puzzle piece to be a superstar event, you you need those guys. You need Connor. You need Nate. You need that. But Nate on his own just isn't at that level. Okay, so he did say something about that, but I don't know who's if he's just saying it like BSing or real truly. He Eddie? said that yeah he he saw Nate's contract and then Nate would be making big money regardless if he fought him or I mean obviously if he fought Connor it'd be the the biggest payday right. But, yeah, uh, I mean, still as like, far as big money, you know, big money compared to what? He said in the millions or at least a million or something like that. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Champs only have the pay-per-view deal, so I don't know. I don't know. So what's he say here about his theory? Since uh, he says the UFD, UFC is doing it on purpose because, you know, how Khabib and Ferguson, this is the fourth time they're going to try to fight. Yeah. And who knows if they're going to go through. Yeah. He thinks the UFC kind of feels like it it probably won't go through. Someone might drop out. And then if that happened and they strip Connor, then they're, the t- the title's vacant. There's no champion. Uh, that's not a bad yeah, right? conspiracy. So then he says that they're probably going to wait till the weigh-in day, you know, after they, they make it official, make a huge announcement then. That's smart. It's going to make big news and big publicity. That's there. fair. Puts more on stake. The only problem with that is, is it too soon, too late too soon where it doesn't drive the pay-per-view numbers up? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if if people go, they're not really fighting for anything. Connor's the champ, and then the day of, like, nope, we strip Connor. It, it, it could work. It could work. So it'll be the day before. It could work yeah. to drive the pay per sales. I actually like that play. Um, then Eddie put it here. If you only want Connor, there's nothing wrong with that. But keep it 100 with everyone, Nate. Don't call out the entire division when you don't want no work from any one of us. It's as phony as your whole character. You fucking dork. You changed, man. Hashtag fake news. Uh, I like his theory on, on, on the Connor stuff. He's probably 100% right. Hmm. Um, I don't think Tony or Khabib pull out. I really don't. I think Khabib has the nutritious now. Khabib wants this belt. Um, he's laying off the tiramisu. He's dead serious. <laughs> I don't. I I honestly would bet a lot of money on it. Khabib makes the fight. Yeah, Re- I mean, if they up, you know, hopefully no injuries, but I bet he makes it. And if it didn't go through, would would they even bother trying to make it again? No. That's, right? It's nope. just too much trouble. Game over. If either one of them don't make this, it's over. What else you got? All right. Oh, we saw that one already? This one, ah, this one tripped me up. So one that's not, championship. That's not real, is it? It's true. So the CEO Fuck. of one, he actually confirmed that Henzo leaked the information, but he said, yeah, Henzo Gracie will be making a debut, his debut in one championship, and he's going to fight Sakuraba. Well, so, remember they did this in Metamoris. So did I'm, they say fight too? Or? Well, no, they just did jujitsu. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's not fight. Uh, this is No, th- this is actual fight? Well, he said fight Sakuraba, but no one said it, like uh, confirmed there would be a mixed martial arts match or anything. And for sure it's going to be a fight. That's all they do. They don't do anything else, Jen. Don't they? They don't do uh, jujitsu. I'm sure they could do like a, what do you call it? Exhibition Fuck stuff. Fuck no. So the legends are going to do an No way. <laughs> not, not fake They're fighting. No, no, they're fighting. There's no way they do a, a like a patty cake thing for the, there's like no one off. No, no, it's going down. Um, it was tough to watch let alone in metamorphs because mm-hmm. Sakuraba. Wow. That's, uh, that's interesting. Henzo's one of my favorite people walking this earth. Love the guy. I'll always support him. Sakuraba looked 5,000 years old. He aged so bad because of all the fights. Jesus Christ. What else you got? And real quick, Henzo's 50. I didn't know that. And Sakuraba's 48. I'm not worried about Henzo. I'm worried about Sakuraba. I kind of am too. Breaking a hip to the cage or some shit. What else you got? (laughs) Okay, so... Daniel Cormier feels as if he if he wins over Miocic, it could make him the greatest fighter of all time. He put, I win this fight July 7th on the greatest fighter of all time. I've done something that was unheard of, and that's what I've always chased. I've always chased that. I chased in the fights. Even John Jones, regardless of the belts, I would always say, once I beat John Jones, I will be the greatest fighter of all time. So I believe that once I do this, something that was so crazy that no one ever attempted, I feel like I'm in the conversation for the best fighter of all time. In the conversation, yeah. yes. 
Best fire of all time? No. Unfortunately. God. Because, you know, the John Jones did beat him very clearly two times. So you, you can't, you just can't do that. You can't do that. Even though John was on some stuff. Now, if DC were to beat Stipe and then stay at heavyweight and John Jones came back and they fought heavyweight and DC beat him, then he's the greatest of all time. But those blemishes of the John Jones stuff, and because those fights weren't that close, you can't be regarded as best of all time. If he were to beat Stipe, there's arguments he's the greatest heavyweight of all time. Mm -hmm. Undefeated, beat Stipe, who is the best UFC heavyweight of all time. So then I'll take that conversation. But as far as pound for pound greatest of all time, we can't do that because of the John Jones blemishes. Unfortunately, it kills me to say that. Top five pound for pound greatest of time, even top three or even number two, 100%. 100%. Either way, he's a Hall of Famer. But if, if he beats Stipe, and this is crazy to say, but he is the greatest heavyweight of all time. It is crazy. But as far as number one greatest of all time, you can't because of John Jones blemishes. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a demon you're never going to be able to chase. Ever. What about a fighter with the greatest like achievements? Mm. Could he have that over John Jones? Not the best fighter, but the fighter that has the most you know, achievement. So he was, he was a, yeah, that's fair. Although John Jones, youngest of all time, mm. look what he did. But then again, John Jones, John Jones record is blemishes by being a bad person, you know, being a f complete fuck up. So, um, that takes him out of that a little bit achievements. So DC two time Olympian, uh, Strike Force Grand Prix ch Grand Prix champion, undefeated at heavyweight, light heavyweight champion multiple times, then heavyweight champion. Oosh. Yeah, that's a more impressive resume than John Jones. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's a good point, Chin. The problem is they fought, and we saw the results twice. Yeah, but as far as straight accomplishments, yeah, DC. I give him the nod. Give him the nod. If DC beats Stipe, he's your pound for pound best heavyweight of all time. And I, I, again, I get the Fedor uh, argument. I get that. I don't consider that because of the competition at the time that people weren't as well-rounded and the lack of drug testing. I, 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 my pound-for-pound pound list and my, my number one guys in the current era is what I fucks with because of USADA. If you weren't in USADA, I'd, it's tough. Is Barry Bonds a better hitter than Stanton and Judge? Probably not. What if Judge and Stat were on the same stuff? What would happen? What else you got? Let's see. Here. Oh, well, do you believe this? Khabib said to uh, RT that if he beats Tony Ferguson, he'll make Conor McGregor wait for a chance to fight him for the title. He doesn't have enough power to do that. I like what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love how marketable Khabib is. And, uh, He's a brilliant mind, amazing fighter, and he says, when I become UFC lightweight champ, I'm going to say, who is the real contender? Who has five or six, seven fight win streak? They have to fight for the title, not McGregor. I like what he's saying, and I, I like how he's taking a stance. However, this is how it's going to go, Khabib. Let's say you beat Tony, which is a tough fight, but let's say you beat him. You're not going to go, oh, I'm going to fight Eddie Alvarez now, or uh, the winner of Poirier, um, uh, Poirier, Justin Gaethje next. This is how it's going to go down. You're going to beat him. The UFC is going to go, hey, congrats. You're the champ. Here's your champion contract, new contract. Everything's all good. We love that you made weight. You're fighting Connor next. No, but hey, I want to fight the guy in a seven-fight win streak. Very cool, could be. Here's Connor next. He, he, you, don't, you don't have that. He doesn't have that much power. It just doesn't work like that. It just doesn't for anybody unless you're Conor McGregor. Now, if Khabib pulls those Conor McGregor numbers... And he beats Connor. If you were to beat Connor and you do it and you get one of the highest pay per views of all time, now you, now you got more power in your in your cage. Now you have more chips in your corner. But from the and I love where he's at with this, and I love when guys make a stance. But it's just not going to work that way. You're not going to be able to call your shots yet. Huge Khabib fan though, and I I think he makes the fight no problem this time. I believe in that. 
What I feel is trippy about this is like if you were competing, would you and you had a chance to fight Conor McGregor next? That's a huge payday, right? Huge. Would payday. you rather have if I'm Khabib? Doing? Not only is it a huge payday, but it's a great matchup for Khabib. Mm-hmm. That's one hundred percent what you're going to do. And it, Khabib's team will tell him, no, 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 no. you're not going to fight Eddie Alvarez or Justin Gaethje or Poirier, none of those guys. Yeah, right. Not you're not fighting Nate. You're going to fight Conor, man. We're going to get paid. It's a great fight for you. You're, you'll probably be the favorite, actually. And they might even do it in Russia. Maybe they'll do it in Dublin. It'd be the biggest thing f- for your career by far. Yeah. So what are you going to do, wait around? No, no, it's silly. But I like how he's making a statement. It's causing headlines. I'm Keep doing that. But it's not real. What else you got? Uh, this is more about the Kane. I'm sorry, the more about the DC thing. So Kane Velasquez tweeted, like always, I'm going to be in the gym every day to help my brother, DC, mm-hmm. become the next heavyweight champ at 226. Once he wins, things can get interesting. I'm not buying it. You buying it? Anyone else buying I it? I really don't buy it, but... No, I feel, I feel like it's forced. I think um, someone's telling Kane to do this stuff. Um, you know, we, we saw his tweet at the Performance Institute, which, you know, people are like, hey, man, you need to get in the good grace of Dana White and the UFC you've been gone for so long. He's been injured. Um, and I feel like this is very forced. You're never fighting DC. You guys are never going to fight each other. Not to mention, Kane has so much rehab to go through and he has to get back on his feet. His first fight back isn't going to be against DC. So you think DC is going to defend the belt after he beats Steve against someone else? You think he's going to fight a Verdum or um, a Francis, which would be cakewalk for him. But you think he's going to fight any of those guys? No. No, he's going to win the belt and get out. He's not going to be around to fight a Kane Velasquez. Kane's going to fight for the vacant title, and but Kane also won. I know this for a fact, guys. Kane is not fighting for the title when he comes back. Look at me. I know this for a f- f- fact. He is not fighting for the title on his first fight in two years. Promise you guys. He's going to get a warm up. Maybe it's the Derek Lewis. Maybe it's a uh, um, an Overeem. But he's not fighting for the title for his first fight. That's not what they want to do. What else you got? He also mentioned that he, I think it's more like he's being comical, but he said that he would, who knows what if he entertains going down to 205. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've been going through so many injuries. It's You've been gone for two years. And then you come back fight. You're going to cut all this weight. at and Now you're at the tail, tail end of your career. Maybe two Maybe two. You're going to fight a warm-up, then you're fighting for the title. Maybe get out. Maybe two. Hopefully everything goes right. And now you're going to add on that your first time ever cutting a 205 and you're older with injuries. Get the fuck out of here. Again, someone is telling him to do this stuff. This is not the cane we know. I like it. You're in the headlines. That's why it took me off guard, too. You're in the headlines. We're talking about it. The rest of the media is talking about it. You're becoming revelant. revelant. You're coming back. Cool. But that's not real. It's all smoke and mirrors. You're not cutting to 205. But just to be accurate, he I think he said he was going to come back. Like He wanted to fight on the same card as the Stipe DC one. Just He wants to fight a heavyweight that time, and then he would consider dropping to Not happening. He'll, he'll, he'll fight for that, and then so that hopefully he's on the July card. Mm-hmm. You get an over him, you get someone you can take down, and then, you know. But he's staying at heavyweight most likely, right? Guarantee it, man. You're older, injuries, you, kinda, you think 205 is the answer? You know how tough it would be for him to cut 205? Nightmare. You think your cardio is going to be just as good at 205? No way. Yeah. Mm-mm. He's the perfect killing machine. He's going to get... Th- this is what they This is what they want to do. It's deep ADC, July 7th. Kane versus put in anyone you want, not number one. You get over him. You get a Francis. They're going to say Francis, so he's definitely not doing it. So you get a Black Beast. You get someone who Kane can beat, right? Mm-hmm. And then if Steve would beat DC, you have that perfect puzzle piece where they fight each other for the yeah. pound for pound greatest heavyweight of all time. I did that, and that, that's you know what you want to plan for, but that's way easier to say and think than than it is to execute. Steve Bay versus DC is a motherfucker of a fight. A motherfucker. That fight is so tough to call, it's not even funny. Let's see what happens. I love that fight. That is the first real super fight in the UFC, in the, in the current state of the new owners. It's sure. the first legit super fight. Why is it a super fight? Look at the odds. Also, it's not like a tiny DC coming up 
to fight, and he's never fought heavyweight. You're talking about a DC who is a world champion already at heavyweight, who's a world champion at light heavyweight, who's undefeated at heavyweight, facing the best heavyweight in the world that the UFC has to offer, who's defended the title most times. You have title holder, title holder, undefeated, current champion. Boom. And the heaviest weight class. Yes. So that it will be the actual it's super a fight. A legit, yeah. legit super fight. What else you got? Um, PFL. I haven't heard of them for a while. The, you know, World Series, the series of Fighting turned into PFL. The professional. professional Fight League, yeah. yeah. Professional Fighters League. So they reached a deal with NBC Sports and uh, Facebook, a broadcast deal. That's cool. Right? Right here. Seven regular season events, bracket style, so it'll be like tournament style. It's kind of cool. $10 million postseason prize pool. And Six of those things become champion. So the actual main... The main cards will air on the TV channel, the NBC Sports. NBC Sports. Yeah, that was tricky to find, but whatever. <laughs> and the prelims on Facebook and then. That's cool. I like, like it. That. Again, the more competition, the more outlets fighters have, the, the more they can compete, you know, just not in the UFC. It, it just builds this whole ecosystem. I love it, man. NBC obviously has the bankroll to do it. I like the playoff system. Um, you know, good luck beating Lance Palmer, anyone out there. Hopefully, if he's still on the roster, that's your cash cow. That guy's so talented. I wish you'd get to the UFC. I gotta take a piss. All right. All right. What else you got? Ronda, WWE. What do you think? Yes. Um, good for her, man. I, you know, she's been out of the limelight for a while. Uh, it was a little weird. I don't know if you saw it. Um, I saw, you know, I was talking to my trainer, Glenn Holmes, who's just balls deep in WWE. He was saying it was kind of awkward because she didn't say anything and get on the mic. She just walked in, pointed to WrestleMania, then went over to Sarah McMahon and shook her hand, which, you know, maybe she's not ready for the chops yet, you know, because you got to spit a promo for WWE. That's half the battle. Is she going to be a heel or a baby face, too? I don't know. I'd assume heel. But if you're going the Rowdy Piper route, you're going to be a baby face. So I don't know how that works. But um, I do, I don't know how long a contract is either, but. What I do know is the grind of the WWE is a motherfucker. You talk to Stone Cold, talk to The Rock, talk to um, Eve Gracie. Everyone says the same thing. It's just a nightmare. So um, she has the potential to be the biggest female ever in the WWE by far. Um, but you're going to have to show personality. You have to get on the mic and rip those promos. She's always been a fan of WWE, so it makes sense to fit. However, it's the same thing when people are talking about stand-up or any anything. If it's not your passion, it's going to come out very, very quickly. And the grind and the toll it takes on mentally and physically, it, it, you're just not going to make it. So hopefully it's her passion. Hopefully it's her true calling. and Because uh, she does have the potential to be the biggest of all time, so I wish her the best. But um, there is a fight this weekend, Chin. I yes, there is. I don't know if you is. know that. There's a fight on uh, Fox Sports. Um, Yes, there is a fight on Fox Sports. So uh, there's some fun fights. The Santos Smith that kicks off the main card is fun. Um, That's going to be a banger. And then you got Shevchenko making an appearance, the assassin. Uh, The main event, co-main event. Excuse me. The co-main event, main event, fun. Leon Machida, friend of mine, training partner. I hate picking against him. I love the guy. It's too much too soon. He doesn't want to fight in, I think, since CB Dalloway. He's been he's been getting starched lately. And then they give him the Eric Anders, who, if you know about Eric Anders, who has the worst nickname in sports, your boy. Eric, your boy Anders. Your boy? Who decided to do that to him? Your boy? God damn it. Um, anyways... Uh, he played linebacker at University of Alabama, was the national champion there, um, didn't really play any pro ball. Physically, as far as a UFC athlete, especially in light heavyweight division, he's right up there. Is he the best athlete just because he played football? I don't think that's fair to say. There are some freaks. I think uh, John Jones or uh, even a DC or Gus Finn are probably a different type of athlete than he is, even though we want to just – you know, Markham, the greatest athlete, because he played at University of Alabama. It really doesn't work like that. However, um, he did just, you know, win against Marcus Perez and then gets on the mic and wants to fight, you know, uh, Leonel Machida, and they grant him that. So they're trying to 
just capitalize off Leo Machida's notoriety and his fame and get a star in this. So, you know, he's gone five rounds before. This is a five round fight. You know, to get his LFA title, he did go five rounds against Brendan Allen and he won a decision. So we know he can go five rounds, but um, that was at middleweight. So, you know, I, I, I think for Leo Machida, it's just, you know, I don't know how much he, you know, is is there what what Machida that we know of is really there? You know, he had the the fight against Luke Rockhold. We get you know he got starched the Yoel Romero elbow starched, and then the Derek Brunson loss in the first round. You know, so he really hasn't had a win since CB Dalloway. Um, and then, you know he had that long layoff where he got suspended too. You know, he's two year suspension. So it's a rough road for him, man. And I I just think as far as um, matchup wise, skill wise, is he more skillful? Is he more skillful, skillful than Eric Anders? Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, Anders is younger. He hits like a Mack truck. Um, Machida's, you know, his lights do go off these days. And it's a bummer. And he's also fighting too soon. I know they need a main event. so they, and It's in Brazil, so they want him to do it. So he answered the call. But it's a terrible matchup for him. Um, you know, he doesn't even wrestle these days although he's great jiu-jitsu but wrestling's not his forte so you don't have to worry about it going to the ground um i would assume anders gets him out of there in the first second round i will say second round ko anders it's a bummer of a fight for leoto machida and i love leoto the the most interesting fight in the car would be the co-main event john dotson uh munoz pedro munoz um, I don't. I think Dotson's probably the favorite in this fight. I got to be honest. I like Munoz in this. I, I, I do. I like Munoz in this. I think um, you know Dotson obviously has the power. He's more explosive, but as, but as far as skill wise, uh, his ground game, Munoz if he gets a hold of your neck, it's definitely over. Uh, you know, Munoz is a nightmare, man, nightmare. Um, you know, again, if he gets a hold of your neck, and you look at his wins. You know, against uh, Russell, he had the guillotine choke. Uh, Justin Scoggins, he had guillotine choke. He actually landed one against Damien two fights ago, but he didn't get the finish. And then Rob Font, uh, guillotine choke. So he gets a hold of your neck in so much trouble, man. It's tough to go, you know, 15 minutes with that guy and he doesn't get a hold of your neck. It's in Brazil. It's in his hometown. So um, I think Munoz is the underdog. And I always like to give you guys an underdog pick if you're betting. So I'll take Munoz in the underdog. Is he an underdog? Let's see. Yes, plus 130. Mm-hmm. I like him as an underdog. And then, of course, Shevchenko's the minus 900, rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so. And the tough one to bet on is that Anthony smith Thiago santos fight. Yeah, that fight can go either way. Santos is a monster and hits like a Mack truck. But that fight can go either way. Also, Tim means Sergio Moraes. That can go either way, too. So if you're better, this is a peach's delight. You can, you can parlay some of these underdogs between Anthony Smith, uh, Marias, and then you got Pedro Munoz, Dotson. You got some underdogs there for you, some live underdogs. So that's a fun one to bet on. Uh, so, my, I mean, my picks, I would go Munoz, Eric Anders, uh, Shevchenko. Uh, God, that Perez Green one stuff. I'll take uh, – I keep going all underdogs. I'll take Green – uh, and then Anthony Smith, Santos, pick your poison. But, you know, the books like Santos. And then I'll take Tim Means. Should we do some fan questions? Or, you know what? Before we do some fan questions, Chin, I had the pleasure of sitting down with the Motown phenom, our boy Kevin Lee. Um, you know, one of my favorite people in the UFC. He's so dynamic. He's such a character. He's going through a little bit of tra- transition with his coach committing suicide. So, you know, he, everyone wants to see him fight against Gaethje. So, you know, he's just not ready. He's looking for his time. I had a wonderful conversation with him. He is a superstar. You know, his last fight, he did lose to um, Tony Ferguson. But, you know, he did some good things in that fight. He's young. He's learning. His brother's living with him. His family lives with him in Vegas. He's a great guy. So uh, enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Kevin Lee. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got one of my faves in studio. Kevin Lee, what's up, brother? What's happening? What's happening? In you the know? Yeezys, man. And with my coffee ready. I'm, I'm on not a mad big at, brown break bro, now. I got to be caffeinated. I'm for not this mad shit. at either of these <laughs> things. This is great, man. What brings you into town? Well, you know, uh, here in LA, and I'm going to break some news on your show. All right. Uh, I'm signing with CAA. Oh, so welcome today, to the squad. Uh, Today I'm a I'm gonna be signing a deal. I've, I've already gone over it. Everything's smooth, so I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be big things on the horizon. That's a sure. big move, man. You yeah. know, I think um, a lot of fighters could take note because 
you know, with with the current state of the UFC, and this isn't hating on UFC, they're doing what's best for them, what's best for their organization. But you know, the UFC is or- owned by WME, yeah. IMG. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for a lot of fighters, be under that banner, it's almost a conflict of interest. So you know, if you're going to get offered a fighter, maybe you're getting offered a movie role. But mm-hmm. you're represented by the same people who own the organization. True. Well, how, what, how, what's in their best interest? True. So for guys that don't, you know, have representation or don't think outside the box, I, I'm telling you, man, they're behind the eight ball. So kudos to you, man. Yeah, I mean, that definitely was a concern, especially with CAA being a, a direct competitor with WME. But, you know... I got to look out what's best for me, what's yeah. the best interest. And I think the more competition is always better. Agreed. You know, that drives up the whole, you know, one the rising tide going to raise all the ships. So this this is just going to make everybody better. You know, it's it's more opportunities for me. It's going to make the sport bigger, which makes the UFC bigger, which helps WME in the in the long run. Yeah, everyone you know, competition wins. is good. Everybody win, 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 win. Did, I love winning. Yeah. <laughs> did you uh did you meet with a few agencies or did you kind of know right away? I had a lot of uh suitors. Let me just say that. You yeah. know, a lot of people have been like There's a lot of sharks. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, you know, they out there. They out there in droves. Uh a lot of people have hit me up about it. You know, I kind of Went back and forth, seeing seeing what the other people were offering. Uh, it's just CAA offers so much. They got everybody, you know. They got, uh, I mean, they got the who's who of Hollywood, oh, yeah. the who's who of of entertainment, the who's who of fighting. Uh, so it, it, it seemed like the perfect fit. And they they got the who's who now. That's right, man. Right, they right. Excited, it's, it's yeah. Together. Tell Tom Cruise beat it, nerd. Um, <laughs> so so you um, because. You know, this kind of day and age we're in with the UFC, managers and agents used to be so important because they used to yeah. put all the logos on your shorts when you fought. Yeah. Now it's a different game because yeah. managers or agents, for that matter, can't go, all right, we got you this sponsor, this sponsor, this sponsor inside the cage. Yeah. So they have to get creative, man. But what's tough is not every fighter could sign with a big corporate or big agency like mm-hmm. CA or like WME or like these other big agencies because they just don't have kind of the appeal yeah it's I mean, not the same kind of deal that we're used to that's exactly what it is so when i was looking at suitors for who i wanted to be my next uh manager it's like now i'm at a different level in my career even with my old manager uh he got me to where i needed to be but at a certain point it's like okay now i need to take it to the next level and i need the right team behind me to do that uh like my my younger brother he's just starting out he's only got four pro fights now he just signed with sucker punch last week uh, Sucker Punch is is a manager. You know they're going to be able to get him the right fights. Yes. They're going to be able to get him to the UFC in the right way. Uh, be able to hone his 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 uh, his skills and really bring him to that next level. I'm already at that next level. Now I'm just trying to bring it Correct. up and above. I think right now it's most important for me to get a good team behind me. And that last fight with Tony Ferguson really kind of showed me uh, I was taking on too much. I was trying to do too much all by myself. Meaning what? You know, my, my manager was just handling the UFC. You know, he was just talking to the UFC for me for the most part. Everything else, you know, as far as promoting myself, as far as like social media. Uh, I mean, there's just so much. You know, I, I bought a house. I was going through a lot of stuff that I was trying to do. And I was trying to do it all by myself. And it it kind of came to a head during the fight. You yeah, can kind of see it. It's exhausting. Trying to keep up with that. Keep up with the weight cut. Uh, managing all these different things. Trying to make deals happen. Trying to promote the fight. It's, it's a lot. And it, it's, it's good to have a team behind you. Yeah, with with that. So when you say the manager deals with the UFC, I'm curious. This day and age, you know that WME owns them. What kind of management's going on? Because even when it's I was much. fighting, it's not much. They're like, it's not much. Shop. Here's the fight, yeah. and my manager like. Uh, anyone else? Like, no. Like, all right, <laughs> it's cool. Like, yo, all right. Then they call me like, yo, shop. Here's the fight. I'm like, is there anyone else? Hold on, let me check. No. Like, all right, thanks, man. Here's your ten percent. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's really what they do. That's really what they show up for. Uh I don't know. And and, and at a certain point you kinda need that a little bit. I True. think in the beginning of your career, uh he got me into the UFC and got me, you know, the right fights because you do have a little more for picking sure. and choosing. But once you get to the top, it's you're gonna fight who you're gonna fight. Yeah, man. I know who I'm gonna fight. I've already yeah. got a, a a vision of who I'm gonna fight. You know, I'm I'm one of these guys, I look at the long term. So I've already got that and said I don't really need somebody to to help me with that yeah. really i mean i don't need a, a secretary Go, going back to your last fight against tony ferguson main event in las vegas what did you learn most from that fight you know it, it was a lot of things uh in that fight especially the experience i being in there with tony he did a lot of things that that were just it, 
you don't see very often. You know, you don't see you don't see certain things. It, you can it's it's one thing to say it before the fight. Yeah. Say this is just like every other fight. Say this is you know I'm approaching it any just the same but once you in there it really is different and I could really kind of see that experience level and I just knew uh I didn't approach it with the right mindset you know I think I think the weight cut had a lot to do with it what was your mindset going in it just I I was like a dog you know like you can see it like you see in my face you watch the fight like I was ready to go I stepped into the arena that night I was ready to fight boy I'm telling you I stepped in two hours before the fight began already sweating as soon as I walked into the arena, I was ready to ready fight. To go. There, there was no warm up. They, I, I punched my my trainer in the face three times. Uh, he was pissed at me. He, 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 he was yeah. pissed at me even more, uh, even more after the fight. But, but but that passion is what got you to this point. You know, like true. that that passion is why people root for you. Is why you're undefeated up to that point. Is why you were the main event with Tony Ferguson. But then you get there. And I think it's a learning experience for you because I don't think there's any reason to hang your head. Or it's not like right. you know you took three steps back. You learn from it. You had this huge staff on your chest, which we'll get to. But then, you know, there's levels to this game, and yeah. it, it, even the NFL, where where it is, you know, in the regular season, the game's fast. Yeah, you to the playoffs, the game's insanely fast. Exactly. You to the Super Bowl, and it's another level. And fighting when you fight a top. You know, let's say 15, 20 guy. It's tough, man. It's different. Then you get the top 10. It's like, holy shit. Then you get the upper echelon guys, the tip of the spear, like Tony Ferguson. And there's just, you can't train for it. You get there and you're like, oh, damn. All right, all right, all right. And then you learn. And then you learn. And then it slows down. And then you're that guy. Yeah, it's 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 more so the moment, too. You know, it, it's it's all this buildup. It's all, it, it kind of felt like almost, I had the same problem going in my UFC debut. Uh, you know, you 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 work so hard for so many years, and then you finally get that shot yeah. in the UFC, and and it kind of hits you, uh, and you don't really you don't expect it the same way, and it, it was kind of the same way going into a title fight. You know, I had built up so much uh, that year. That was my that was my plan. When I started that year, I knew what I was gonna do. I was gonna go from unranked into a number one contender spot, and I ended up in a title fight. And even though I had the vision the whole time. You don't have that experience. Yeah, I think now that I have that experience, especially, I I'm a dangerous motherfucker. They going to have to watch out for me. It's, it's going to be good. Yeah, and there's a lot of good matchups for you. Yeah, there's that's a ton of matchups. That's a for good you. thing, especially at 155. I've got a lot of options open uh, right now. I'm taking my time. Like I said, I'm, I'm changing up my teams around me too. Uh, being more professional about my approach to the game, understanding when to turn it on and when to turn it off. You know, George, I think, said it best, uh, St. Pierre. GSP, yeah. Yeah, he he said there's a difference between championship level fighting and professional fighting correct you know the championship level is just different you know you you learn how to how to manage your energy better you learn how to when to turn it on and when to turn it off you gotta be a professional exactly it's being a professional and i and i you know i think with that tony ferguson fight and you learning from that it's gonna get you there because you have all the skills you know you have the skills i think we saw in the tony ferguson fight you taking him down listen tony ferguson's not easy to take down no no he ain't hell no (laughs) yeah i'll tell you right now he not no hell no (laughs) yeah no it took some energy i'm telling you the other thing people forget on that fight is that was i think was that the week after the massacre in las vegas yeah 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 so there was a there was a lot there's a lot going on some people thought they were going to cancel the fight some people didn't agree the fight was still going on i think it should have still went on i don't think you just focused Focus on the negative. I think you try to gather around the community and, you know, put a fight on to take their mind off it, which is what you guys did. But that fight, there was a ton going into that, man. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was just a lot. Even in my personal life, you know, I, I had just bought the house. You know, before that, I, actually, I had actually lost a house uh, dealing with the escrow. And in all Vegas? That. Yeah, in Vegas. Dude, uh, is there anything more stressful than buying a house? Oh, uh, bro, I'm telling you. I'm going through it right uh, now. Uh, I'm telling you. I'm going through it right now. It's brutal. Two weeks from it. It's yeah, brutal. Man. It 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 affects you, like, physically. Oh, you know, first it affects you mentally, then it affects you physically. And I, I think that's, that's what you kind of saw. All those things, you know, with the shooting, uh, I was going through a divorce at the same time, too. It's, it's like it was so much, and it came out into my physical, you know. I think that's what made the staff so you were worse. you buying a house, you got staff, getting a divorce, oh, fighting God, during brutal. the— I mean, oh, bro, it's brutal. a perfect storm. It's brutal. I, I, I still felt like I could have done better. I still felt like uh, I had my moments in the fight where I saw moments. what I did wrong technically. Uh, and I can go back. I can look at it. I can see what I did wrong before the fight, too. Yeah. You know, my warm up, my preparation. Uh, so it's still a lot for me to learn. But 
you know, sometimes the chips gonna fall where they gonna fall, and which is all good, man. You're, you're young, you're young, yeah, but yeah. Y- your your division right now, it's kind of it's it's a frustrating division because mm-hmm. you also have Connor doing his thing. Who knows? And Dana for the first time goes, listen, Connor saying he might fight in September. We don't know, but you know, we're we're probably gonna take the belt from him. If yeah, I mean. You got Connor. You got you got Khabib's up. That's up there. Uh, a lot of people are even forgetting about. Uh, I even I'm forgetting his name right now. Let's, uh, Who's that? Eddie uh, Alvarez? No, no, no. Uh, Gaethje. Poirier. Oh, Dustin, Dustin Poirier. Poirier. Yeah, Dustin Poirier is monster. He's been looking good these past couple fights. He's uh, trouble. Dustin Poirier's up there with, with the best of them. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, you got the, this division is full. It's stacked. I, I think it's a you know it, it's an exciting time to be a part of it. You know, you got, I got Edson. I got I got Justin. I got Poirier. I got all these different options. I love options. Options always good. Yeah, and I I think what's going to happen is on uh, at UFC 220, Khabib's supposed to do some big announcement. From what I hear, the annou- announcement is him versus Tony Ferguson. I like that. I I, I like the fight. Uh, originally, I thought they should, they were just going to go straight with the Tony versus Connor. Me too. It's smart for Connor to sit back on that. Might as well. You know, he's he's going to lose versus Tony for sure. I you mean, think? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't see no way he beats. I don't. I, I just don't see him beating Tony Ferguson. You see him Let, beating Khabib? I see him beating Khabib a lot easier than Tony. Wow, I disagree. You know, a lot of people say that. A lot of people are high on Khabib. I don't know, man. I, I just you've been calling Khabib out since I've like, been calling Khabib out for years, bro. Yeah. Years, bro. <laughs> they you were, just you just see holes in his game. They know. They know. You know. I know his manager real good, Ali. Really? They, they know. They I know. Love I, got, Ali, yeah. I got the juice for him. So uh, <laughs> I I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm on his head. As soon as he, as soon as you know, he does good. He picks the right matchups for him. Uh, he's got good matchups. I'll Khabib, give you that. Khabib's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of holes in his game. You know, and his, his striking terrible. His, his, his striking is terrible. But his grappling uh, is tough. it's brutal. It's tough. But you just have to keep moving. You have to keep moving. You yeah. gotta not, not let him settle. I think that's what Tony's gonna do. Uh, I think I think Connor would would, would sleep him. I think he'll sleep Khabib. Damn, see, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm going out on a limb here. I, I hear you. I hear he, you. He see, sleeps Khabib. He stands a much better chance versus uh, Khabib than Tony. I'll see, I, I, I like his chances more. They're both tough fights. He'll, he'll probably be an underdog in both the fights. But I think against Tony Ferguson, Tony does get hit. Tony yeah. will play yeah. that game and will take, you know, uh, a chance with striking with Connor, which is, you know, those first two rounds are going to be a doozy for Tony. Khabib really doesn't mess with it. He's just going to shoot right away or get an underhook on Connor. And then he gets nasty on the See, ground. But I think the difference is that Tony kind of approaches <laughs> the fight knowing he's going to get hit. Yeah. You know, even when you hit him <clears throat> clean, he still rolls with it a little yes. bit. You know, he, he's got that experience through boxing and, and, and through a lot of years of kickboxing, you could tell. It seems when, when, when Khabib gets hit, he doesn't really expect it. You no, know, he's yeah, just I trying agree. to push forward. Those are the punches, I think, that sting you a lot more. You see, Khabib will stop in his tracks because he's coming straight forward. And against somebody with a, with a, with a left hand like that, I, I don't know. I, I, I like Tony's style a little bit better for it you know tony's a little more elusive even though tony does get hit he moves well with the punches he's better distance control and then also be forget too if the going gets rough for tony he can wrestle yeah exactly exactly he he can wrestle uh he can wrestle really well from the bottom too he did yeah. a lot of sneaky things from the bottom that uh you just don't see anybody else doing so I, I think that's the fight to make right now, if anything, because Connor's going to sit out on it. Connor's going to be smart. Uh, make Tony versus Khabib. Winner fights Connor, and then you think Connor fights again? And then I'll whoop, I'll whoop Connor's ass at the end of this year. <laughs> you think Connor fights again? Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. I don't, I don't see why people were even saying that he wasn't. Yeah. You know, you got a hundred million dollars, you can blow through that shit quick. Oh, yeah, you can blow through that shit oh, quick. Yeah, you know, he like the I eight, like he, yeah. boy, he be moving. Depend on what you like. Yeah, he he likes to move, and the man's only what twenty. Seven? No, he's, he's twenty nine now. Twenty yeah. nine. Yeah. All right. Well, How I mean, old are you? Still, I'm twenty five. Yeah. Damn, so I'm, you're you know, young. I'm, I'm about to catch up to his ass. Watch. He ain't got no Damn, some years on me. Yeah, you're I'm young, telling man. you, boy. Watch, <laughs> bro. You're probably. Are you the youngest in the top ten? Uh, yeah, at this weight class for sure. One hundred percent. Yeah, at this weight class. The only uh, the only other guy is uh, Max Holloway, who, who's my boy. I see him eventually coming up to one fifty five. He's and, coming. You to know, yeah, he's yeah. coming to fifty five for sure. Uh, great fights for him there too. A lot of good fights, and, yeah. and you know he's a great fighter too, and he's still getting better too. You know he's twenty five. He's, he's, he's trouble, man. He, I saw uh, who was it? Gaethje was wanting to scrapple with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I told. Look, I, I did it on uh, MMA Junkie. I'm telling him I'm doing this for Gaethje's health. Yeah, 
it, Gagey just took a couple beatings. He, he needs to sit on that. Look, yeah. I'm telling him, I, I like Gagey. He's, He's crazy. okay. Yeah. He's a fan of mine. Like, I like my fans. I love them. Yeah. So... I'm not going to ruin his health like that. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just, so you're I'll not, let him you're not interested in the Gaethje matchup. I am, but not right now. You know, it's, it's a lot of other things that I'm dealing with too, that I'm, you know, trying to set up, uh, you know, like I said, I'm switching management, you know, I'm switching coaches too. you know, my, my coach, uh, coach passed away. Yeah. yeah coach passed away a couple of weeks How ago. How tough so was that? It's brutal, man. It's still, it's close? still been tough. You guys were close. You know, we, we were a lot closer than, than people even realized, uh, we thought a lot alike. You know, he was the one coach that really got me to the core. Uh, you know, I only lost one fight in our time together before this Tony fight. And it was the one fight that I didn't have in my corner. If you go back and you see my fight with Leonardo Santos, instead of him, I got Robert Drysdale there because Leonardo was such a great uh, guy on the ground. But I remember after after I got caught by that punch, I sat in the back. I looked at Rob in the face. I was like, damn, I should have had Rob fall this year. Yeah. You know, I just knew. And I told him right after that fight, I was like, I'll never fight again without you in my corner. And, you know, I got to do that again. But eh, that's that's the way the chips fall. You know, that's Did you know he was struggling with with depression or anything like that? Uh, You know, his his family life was was brutal. Uh, I think that's where a lot of it stemmed from. I know he had been going through it before. I didn't know it was ongoing, that he was still currently going through it. I knew it was in the past, but, you know, it, it was a shock to me as much as anybody else. Uh, Chael Sonnen actually was the first person to, to text me and, and tell me I was in Michigan with my brother. He fought his fourth pro fight. You know, we were he, he knocked the kid out in the first round. It was smooth. You know, we were at the after party. Like, we were having fun, you know, and, enjoying ourselves and you know i got that text and you know you know chael chael's blunt you know chael just straight up told me and it's you know it's brutal so as soon as i came back uh i went to go see his girl his his brother and all and you know everything they made me feel a lot better about the situation i leave from here la to portland uh to do a little memorial open mat for him so we'll, we'll give back to him i think the best way of giving back it's the steal for me to go out there, get that gold belt, Hell yeah. and really show him. Yeah. So then, who's going to step in place for him now? I'm not sure right now. You know, I, right now I'm I'm kind of like in the transition phase. You know, I'm 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 in the learning phase. That's why I'm not quick to hop right back into training. No, camp. hell no. I'm trying to learn. I'm learning from everybody. I, I I try and learn something from even guys that are day one all the way up to you know the best coaches in the game. So, but you you spend most of your training in Vegas. Yeah, in Vegas still. Yeah, yeah. I, I live in Vegas uh, full time. Uh, most of my training is there. You know, I train with uh, Dewey Cooper, uh, Robert Drysdale, still over at Extreme Couture. Uh, every now and again, I'll go over to Mayweather's gym and get some boxing in there. But even now, I'm doing a lot of tra- uh, traveling around, too. I want to go up to Montreal, train a little bit with Faraz. I'm supposed to meet with him while I'm here in he's L.A. He's amazing. He, he, he's a great mind. Have you worked with him before? And no, never worked with him, but I know he's a great mind for MMA. He's really, so, really uh, good. That's kind of what Rob brought to the game. He brought the mindset. You know, he was a great MMA coach. Yes. And he really understood the mindset and everything behind They're it. They're tough to find, man. They're very, it's, it's few and far between. You know, you only get a couple. You know, you got Matt Hume, you got Greg Jackson, you got Farah Sahabi. Uh, you know, you had Rob Fallis was up there with him. So now I just got to, I, I don't know, I'll see. So are you willing to move out of Vegas to make that connection? Or would you do camp somewhere? You know, because the chance of you finding one in Vegas, I don't. It's, it's going to be it limits slim. your options, yeah. Uh, I will give it to to Eric Nixick over at Extreme Couture. He's he's been really stepping up. He's been helping a whole lot with my brother too. Uh, he kind of keep it, making sure that he's staying on the right track. He's helping with a lot of guys at Extreme. Uh, he's trying to fill those shoes in right now, and he will get Good better him, the yeah. more the more experience that he gets. But for right now, I don't know. I'm I'm testing out the waters. I'm gonna see. And then uh, when it's time for me to hop back into training camp, then then I'll make that decision. You'll know when it's right, though. You know how it goes. You'll feel that chemistry. Yeah. You you know. You, you, you feel it right it. away. Yeah. You know, you can't force it. I can't find anybody to really replace it because then that's just going to irritate the fuck out of me yeah. anyway. So I, it's just going to come natural how it come. And you're, you're, you said your younger brother's 4 now? Yeah, he's uh he's he's 4 and 1 right now. Same style as you? Uh, 135-er, uh, kicking kick and fight kid kids way uh he's 21 years old uh keith lee is his name does he have a wrestling background like you 
Yeah, yeah. He's he wrestled in college, wrestled in uh wrestled in high school. You know, same style, but he's he's better on the feet. I ain't gonna lie. You know, he he's, he's good you shape. know, he started out yeah. earlier. He he he's a little more athletic too. Uh I'm I'm giving to him the kick and fight. He, he's gonna be a problem, especially for these a lot of these one thirty fivers when he gets to the US. Do you guys live together? Yeah, yeah, full time. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, I got I, my my immediate family. I brought them all out to Vegas. Really, you know, I couldn't just leave them back in Detroit. Yeah, it's a so I, yeah. I had to. They they've been living out there with me for the past three or four years. The now. whole fam's out. The whole family. Damn, yeah. look at you, yeah, man. The whole fam. They 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 stay across. You know, my mom and pops and all them. They stay across town. Me and my brother Keith. Uh, uh, we stay down in Henderson, and uh, you know we get it in. I that's love it, it man. In. Yeah, you know that, that's what it's about. It's all about the family. You know, people think I'm. People think I'm one way or the other, or they think I'm different because, uh, you know, they think I'm always in a club or I'm always yeah. club hopping and all this. Like I'm, I be chilling, man. I, you know, I I got my girl. Like I be settled. I be straight. I keep my head on straight. Have, I got a, a lot of bigger things. You have a my, serious girlfriend right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, all right now. You know, keeping on the rap, but you know, that's, <laughs> I, you know, you know. I, I mean, we can edit that out if you want. <laughs> I'm gonna be a real cock block. <laughs> 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 but she keep me she keep me grounded you know she keep me she keep me doing the things that I'm supposed to do because I got much bigger plans than you know just going to the club every night I'll the, tell you that these, these plans were, describe some of these to me I, I, I said it before I'm gonna say it again I'm gonna be a world champion yeah I'm gonna be a world champion with or without whatever uh, and not only that but I'm gonna hold the belt for a long time you know there's a lot of big fights on the horizon for me uh, I, I see that Conor fight happening before this year is over so that's the one I'm pushing for right now. I want to get back to the Tony fight. That's really, I think Tony right now is the the undisputed champ. Uh, you know, he's the guy that I'm really gunning for. It's going to take me a minute to get back up there and to really get it right. But I'm, I got something to go for right now. Yeah, I thought you had, you know, not to harp on, on that last loss, but I thought you had such a big opportunity there. If you were to get by Tony, it was a big gift because, you know, you know, Tony, Tony is, he's the, the tip of the spear right now at 155. If you were to get past him and get on that mic, Connor would be open more so a fight with you over Tony or oh, over listen, Because you can sell the fight. Yeah, make, These make, other guys can't sell the fight. Make no doubt about it. If I would have beat Tony, there would have been no, oh, is Connor coming back? Or, oh, is he fighting Khabib? Or, oh, is he fighting Tony? Like, it would've, we would have been already, the fight would have already been signed, for sure. Uh, you know, it's just... Look, everything happened for a reason. It's timing in this game. Uh, right now, I'm laying low. I'm seeing what the rest of these dudes is doing. I've been doing the heavy lifting for the past year or so. Yeah. You know, I took four fights in a year. You're good. Uh, so I'm good. I'm, I'm going to sit for a little bit, see what they can do. Is there is there things you want to do outside the cage? <laughs> you know it. You know I'm it. Like, that's, that. you know, yeah. that's why I'm with CAA. You yeah, know? They're, know. they're going to get me the right... Uh, there, there's so much more than just fighting, you know. And yeah. you know, we were even talking about. I think one of the first things we want to do is a podcast, like some similar to. I mean, not at this. Uh, you know, we ain't gonna be in no nice ass building. You'd like be surprised, this year. man. Like, You'd be man. surprised, man. Yeah, you're doing your Any thing. Any help you need, let me know, man. You've been doing your thing. Be good. Yeah, I've been saying good, you, but yeah. uh, you know, we we've been talking about it. Maybe me and my brother start up one. Uh, That's you know, idea. call it Motown Podcast. I dig that. MTP. <laughs> I did in the that. building. <laughs> Your brother has personality like you too. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's great at breaking down fights. He's a little bit funnier. No lie. He's a little <laughs> no, bit more entertaining. He's better striking than he's funny. I know, I know. Where's I, he look, at? Look, look, I, I'm Where's telling he you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I look, I give it to him. Look, I you know, I, I support everybody. You know, are I you mean, the oldest? Uh, I'm the oldest. Yeah, I got two younger brothers. All right. Uh, one's 17, the other one's 21. Uh, but, you know, I'm, look, that's my bro. I got yeah. to back to the end. Like, yeah. you, know, Did you, you, guys, you guys grew up fighting? Off, yeah, off yeah, you, of course. Off of each course. other, but. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, he got a couple broken bones from me. It's, How was that? None none coming this way. <laughs> look, I ain't took a lick in not one day. I ain't going to lie to you. That's why he's so tough. I ain't took not one, but uh, we, we had to. I had to build them tough. We, we from Michigan. They yeah. built a four tough out there. Man, I tell you what, I, I like Michigan. I was in Detroit on a Sunday night. My agent uh, sent me there for a show. I forget what venue it was, but I was like, God, Detroit on a Sunday night? What kind of crowd are we going to get, man? And it was 
glorious out there. You were there, Chin. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing Detroit was dope. Crowd, yeah. yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, no. Well, you guys kind of get a bad rap, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, the actual city does. But the city's been coming back, uh, you know, especially when I came, went there a couple weeks ago for the UFC uh, in right. Detroit when Max Holloway fought uh, Aldo. The, the city coming back is, you know, it's white people walking around downtown like they ain't not clutching their purses. Nope. They not worried. It's like, all good. They got trolleys and trams and yeah. and taxis and all this. Like when I was living there, it was none of that. But the city's been coming back. It has to come back. Uh, and I'm excited for it. I think the, the UFC will definitely come back there again next year. And I'm a hell on that car, too. Dig that. So maybe start a podcast. What other aspirations do you have? I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see. You know, uh, talking about fighting in general is, is what I like to do. Do you, do you want to do like some of the UFC Tonight stuff? You thinking like that? Some commentating stuff or Fox has has really been. They've been asking for me for a while. You know, I went in and I kind of sat in and, and watched how they do. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll eventually. I'll, I will. Um, I don't know. We 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 had to sit down. We got to talk to them. See what type of deal they're talking about. Yeah. Or even see when they want me to come out. You know, it's a short flight from from Vegas to LA. Super easy. Yeah. Super easy is is nothing. So I can fly here. I, I was just here last week. I'm here again this week. I'll probably be back next week. Yeah. Uh. So you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see what what type of deals that we'll see what, what what can make it happen. Does your does your personality like on the on the mic? You're great. Obviously on social media. Obviously getting fights. You're good at it. Do you feel pressure to do that, or is that natural to you? Because you can tell, like a lot of guys in this kind of the the state we're in with the with the UFC, you know, the Conor McGregor effect, where guys feel like they have to be entertaining, they have to talk to trash nowadays, and it's just it's not it's not a fit for them. But for you, it is. You know, honestly, like this is what I like to do mostly. You know, social yeah. media, I'm not too great on. Like anybody who yeah. follows me on social media, no, I'm not like very active and. Uh, but this, like talking and and I, I like to talk shit. Like I grew up talking shit. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody is when guys try. I feel like it really comes through, and you can really see it. You know, you got like Kobe Covington is trying. It's, it's so it's just, bad. It's, it's terrible. Oh. You know, you had Mike Johnson that was trying to do it for a while, and it's just like that's not what you do. It's just do you. You know, I get that. That even when we had the summit, you know, everybody was saying, "Oh, be like Connor, be like Connor." Like, nah. I've, just be you. You know what I mean? I think that's what they really want to see. I and agree. maybe sometimes you do have to take that over the top. You know, your personality, your own personality, but it's still you. You know, you can't you can't try and I think when it's when it's manufactured or when you really try and like you can tell and it's it, it turns people off. I think it actually hurts the UFC when guys do that. It, it like does. No one, everyone's like, oh, I'm not trying to see that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody nobody wants to hear. Like everybody wants to say Oh, talking shit is just like, oh, I'm going to slap the hell out of you and your mama and all this and back and forth. But it's not that. You know, no. it's, it's so much more. When, before I fought Tony, I made sure people knew Tony was the toughest fight in that division because he was. Yeah. I just tell people the truth. I don't give you no, you know, oh, I'm going to go out there and just smoke Tony within a round or because it's never even, yeah. I, I don't even see that for myself. I'm yeah. not going to lie like that, you know. So I just try and tell people the truth. I try and give them his unfiltered and un uncensored as possible and people either gonna love it they're gonna hate it they're gonna do what they're gonna do but i'm gonna keep doing me so so at the summit they were like hey make sure you try to be like conor mcgregor and for the most like, part all right well <laughs> make sure you get conor mcgregor uh, fighter kits out the back too we get, we can for the do. most part that's what it really boiled down to it i i went uh just because i live in vegas and it's like it was like right down the street don't you so. have to go you didn't have to. Oh, I mean, really? some people went and then they just left halfway through. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got the invitation and all. So so I went. I went and sat through. You know, it's it's always good to make connections anyway. But, you know, for the majority of it, when it really boiled down to it, it was be more like Conor McGregor. Be like this. And it's like, I, I get that. I do because they want, but it can't be replicated. You no. know, you can't have a Conor McGregor. Connor was just that because, you know, it was so many different factors. You know, the kids from Ireland. If he if he was if he was Joe Schmo from St. Louis, Not you cool. wouldn't be hearing shit about Not him, you know? Cool, you wouldn't no. mm -mm. nobody would be flying to his fights. Uh, you know, he'd still be on the undercards fighting somewhere and talking a bunch of shit, but he'd still be where he at. Yeah, I, I just think guys are feeling some extra added pressure, I should say, to kind of talk this this trash and to be entertaining when it's just not in their personality. Yeah. And it's, and to me, it's like, you know, and I'm not harping on the UFC. I'm not being negative about the UFC. It's like, it's up to you guys. They win fights. You tell their story. They'll do their best on their end, but really it's up to you to mark them as the fighter. Well, I do have to say, I mean, I think there's a lot of different ways that you can promote, you know, we not create nothing new here. 
We just we just re revamping the same old, same old, really. I mean, you got some guys like Brock Lesnar is one of the biggest draws ever. Won't ever give an interview. Yeah. You know, George St. Pierre never talks shit. Never never gives an interview. That that's just that's his style. You know, that's that what works, works for him. That's him, yeah. It, it works for him because that's who he really is. When yeah. you meet George, George is the nicest dude that you'll ever meet. Yep. You know, if he's all of a sudden tried to like th- start talking shit, like his numbers would go be th- awful. They would plummet. Awful. You know, it's just you have to be you and just be how you going to be that 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 that's if, when it really boils down to it that's what it is when dana says he wants you to be a your own star it's just just feel like a fucking star and you'll be a star you yep. know what i mean like yep. that's how i felt like it yep at the minute that i start seeing myself as a champion the minute i start seeing myself as a star then you just be that, uh, that it ain't really that hard <laughs> Well, for you, it's not. For some guys, it is. For some guys, it's really hard. But that's why you're Kevin Lee, man. I'm that's trying. I'm trying. I mean, I, I will say, even uh, Tyrone Woodley came out a little while ago. He was on Joe's podcast, yeah. which, by the way, I need the, jo- the plug with Joe's. All right. I, <laughs> I'll connect you guys. I, fuck, I love Joe's podcast, yeah. man. I'll do anything to get on. Yeah. But uh, I seen Tyrone was on there. You know, he, he, he even has a way. I like Tyron. He cool people. You know, we hung out when he was in Detroit. I showed him around my yeah. old neighborhoods and all yeah. that. Uh, but he even has a way of saying things without really saying them. And it just sounds like you complaining. You know what I mean? Bingo. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Love Woodley. I just had coffee with him. So before we, yeah, I love Woodley. Great dude. But to me, it came off, and what I get a lot from his interviews when he's on UC Night, it comes off as whining. Yeah. And where I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Nobody want to hear grown no, ass I, man I, no, whine. I don't need that. Like you grown. Like you know, that. you you either go you either gonna play the chips how they gonna fall or you not. You know, I think it's two ways to look at every situation. You either gonna look at it like a victim or you just gonna be like, all right, well, this is what I got and this is what I'm gonna work with. And you you just gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, him playing the victim's just not appealing right now, especially when you the reigning defending champion you yeah. know what i'm saying like we'll be, one of the scariest dudes I on know. the planet and he, he the reason he's he's going after these super fights because we're in the super fight era so you want the nate diaz fight didn't happen you want Conor mcgregor didn't happen you want gsp didn't happen it's like it's see i think that's the problem you know but that's the, him wanting the those. champion UFC never said here you're getting connor here you're getting this guy the I champion think nate diaz was close but the champion shouldn't be searching for a fight anyway yes. you know he should let them guys come to him you know he's the marquee fight uh when i look at it i look at it as i'm the marquee fight you know they, they're gonna come to me yeah and i think it's just the 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 different approach and you you know it just sounds like it just sounds like you're whining you know when you you're saying oh i want this fight i want this you the champion yeah like you the money fight stupid like what are you doing Ch- you're chasing money fights you're the money fight is he though he can be that. I mean, sure. He, the man, only has a certain number of USC fights anyway. I think he's he's got less than ten, doesn't he? Or yeah, he came sure. over I mean, from Strike Force. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have that many USC fights to begin with. But yeah. it's like just be the money fight, and you'll be the money fight. You know what I mean? It's 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 just it's contradicting itself. You know, the UFC. I will say this: the the, the UFC doesn't really know how to promote black fighters yet. They've had that problem for a long time. And I sat down with Dana myself uh, right before the Tony Ferguson fight, and I told him, I'm like, you know, if you're looking for somebody, like, your boy, (laughs) holler at your boy. What do you think they need to do? Because I'm trying to think, let's go over some of the the big African-American fighters. So, John Jones, obviously the biggest. Right, right. He kind of marketed himself with the bad boy image, just constantly fucking up. But you see, I mean, John has become a star since then. You know, people really got on his on his side. John's a star because everyone likes a redemption story. I don't know if John's a star if we actually met the real John Jones. I think once he embraced that and you kind of seen that a little bit more with that press conference we were part of in Dallas. People loved it once he embraced it. The realness. It was it was when he was doing that. The Jesus oh, I'm stuff, holier oh, than God. thou, and all this, and it's just like, oh, bro, like you, come on, but he, stop. He was so. If you think about it, the, he was probably the biggest African American draw, right? Yeah, John Jones, and then who else? So you got you got Woodley, you got DC, which I cannot figure out why DC's not a bigger draw. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something I don't know. I mean, he I, looks I, like your, I like DC, your uncle. But, 
It, that's probably it looks what like it is. an uncle. It, that's probably what it is. He looks like you an know, out of shape he, uncle. You know, it, like, nah. it, what it is is it, it's probably he's a little bit older. You know, he went through. He he spent most of his life wrestling in the Olympics. Yeah. So he's a little bit older, and it's, it's just it's kind of hard to get behind him. You know, it's I think just you not, need the, I don't know what it is. You, I love you need him. that. You need that young face, but I don't. I don't think it's many in the game right now. I think. I mean, I'm few and far between. You know, I think they've been trying to do a lot of stuff with me, and I, Tyrone would do a lot better. If he stopped complaining so goddamn I much, like I tell him that himself, like Tyron, I'm, I'm gonna text you after this, like quit stop complaining so goddamn yeah, I agree. much. Yeah, but yeah, the the only argument that you might have with the African American fighters, not the only, but one of the major ones, be Mighty Mouse. Yeah, uh, now, is it because he's African American? It's because he's a hundred pounds. I th- I think honestly, what it is is Mighty Mouse tries, but he really don't give a fuck. You know, Mighty Mouse is he's comfortable. You know, he, he, he's he got his wife, he's got his kids, he's got his house, He's he's got money in the bank. Greatest champion of all time, Greatest, some people say, yeah. He, he, he's got the record for title defenses. I think he cares more about the competition aspect of it than yeah. anything. And he really just don't give a fuck about it, which is cool. I mean, if you I'm don't. cool with it, yeah. Like, he's so talented, like, we, you know, do I'll be thing. cool with it. Yeah. You know, like... And he he does try, you know. We we done uh, the Metro show a couple of times. I've got to hang out with him. Uh, you know, he was co-main underneath Nicest guy the ever. fight. So I I was trying to give him like pointers on what to what to do, how to how to act, what to say, yeah. and all this. And he really don't give He's a like, fuck. I don't care. He man. don't care. Trying to play these video games, get these belts, which is cool. And have kids. And look, I'll take I'll take the cover for it. You know, I, it. I think I could be the one to really uh, push into that market. What would you do different though? Like a guy like Woodley. Woodley said the same thing to me. He goes, I just don't think the UFC knows how to market me. I said, so what should they do then? Tell them. It, it's 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 hard to really it's hard to really say it and like put it in into in words into words. You know what I mean? Like you just know it. You know what I mean? when when you see. Uh, a black fight. I think Bellator does a better job with it. You know, Bellator had the King Mo and Rampage fight. Yeah. I think was the perfect example of how to market uh, towards a black audience. I think the UFC really dropped the ball with Rampage just because they were so on Chuck Liddell, and you know, Rampage kind of had Chuck's number, and they they dropped the ball with Rampage. Rampage could Rampage could have been a huge break uh, crossover star between For the sure. UFC and the black community. Yeah. Like that's just what it is. The UFC, I think. Out of all the 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 markets that they need to push into, the black market is the one that they miss out the most. And will that change? We'll see with WME. Oh, it it should because if you, I don't know if you saw a recent article lately, the numbers in the UFC and the the trend of it being less popular, and numbers going down, especially in the states. If they're going to focus on one thing, try to get numbers back up, it could be the African American population. I mean, they they try to push because, it to every market. Yeah, true. That's, that's that's a smart thing to do. But if you want to focus on one that you haven't hit, to your point, would be the African American market because obviously Floyd Mayweather makes the connection. Yeah. Why yep. do you think that is? Well, I mean, because because uh, you know, because you know, what I'm saying he's Floyd, he's flashy, he's right? flashy. You know, he got he got the bread. I mean, for one, in order to get it, you got to have the bread. Correct. That's for sure. I mean, you, you it's just. That's what black people are attracted to. Like, I, I'm going to be, you know, I, I keep it 100. Like, we like gold. We like diamonds. We like shit that stand out. You know I what I mean? Like That's just how it diamonds. is. Like, yeah. you know, I, I got a couple belts that cost yeah. more than, like, people's cars. And yeah. shit, you know, like, that's just what what we like. So I think you need the bread. I mean, Floyd obviously had it, and he's had it since the 90s. See, do you, and, but do you think that, and I'm not giving the UFC uh, a write-off here, but has there really hasn't, has there been an African-American who has kind of made that jump? You know no. what I'm saying? Who's can win fights, who can talk the talk, then also, you know, spend the money like Floyd Mayweather. I, I think they really Ram- haven't had a I, star. I think Rampage was 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 the main one. He was big, yeah. Uh and they kind of dropped the ball. I mean Rampage was still big, but he could have been so much bigger it, had he had the right promoter and, and whatnot behind him. Uh and they kind of dropped the ball with that one. I think Rampage is about the only one to really say that. Connor actually does a great job with it. I will Connor give him does that. A good job. Connor actually pushes more into the black market than I think Anybody else. He's definitely very similar more to so Floyd Mayweather. He's very similar. Very similar. Very he took he took Floyd's. I mean, Floyd's not lying. He took Floyd's Correct. blueprint and then he just ran with it. I mean, Correct. he just did it from an Irish. Uh, you know, everybody wanted to be black anyway. I mean, I, I've been saying. Well, this. Rick Rick Flair did it before Floyd, and that's where Floyd got it's it. True and that. I mean, Rick Flair's a huge hit. Like I said, we we not doing nothing in the promoting. 
business that's new. Yeah. You just taking the same wheels and you just keep on yeah. spinning it. I yep. mean, that's that's what the game is, and and it's so it's just it bothers me that so many people write about the sport and know the sport and love the sport and don't even understand that part of the game. You know, you you it's the same shit. Just regurgitating. You know, everybody before Connor got big, everybody was saying, "Oh, Connor was trying to be Chael." Yeah. You know, and before it was Chael, and they were saying Chael was trying to be WWE or however it there's is. Guys just, doing it way before them. This shit's just gonna yeah. keep keep rotating. As I look at the roster, there's not a ton of African American fighters, though. You know nah, what I'm saying? Like yeah. that. I don't know what the percentage is, but I would. It's less than ten percent of the UFC is African American. For sure, uh, I think that's changing. I think it's. I think you definitely see a lot more in this day and age than you did in the past. Uh, I think as the money gets bigger, Bingo. then I mean that's that's just the truth of it. You Bingo. know, if if it would have been if if the the purses were bigger, if more money was into it, then more black people would do it. I mean, that's who we attracted to. Like I'm just being, but but if if I'm a really athletic, whether I'm white or black, if I'm really athletic and I'm growing up. It's like, do you want to go down the fighting road or do you want to play basketball and football? Fighting's Guaranteed. hard. Yeah, fight. fighting's There's hard. There's no blueprint. It's, it's brutal. Because you don't go in fighting. There's no Pop Warner, uh, high school. I get recruited. I go to college. I do well in college. I get scouted by the NFL. I get drafted. There's In fighting, there's... You, have, you better just kind of find your way. You you better have a passion for it too, you know, it, because those those first couple years fighting are brutal. Yeah. You know, I, I've had to live on the gym floors and you know wouldn't have a scrap to eat while going to college at the same time. Uh, I mean, that's where the real passion comes out. And if you don't have that, you can't really manufacture. You, just you know it. what I mean? It's, you just got to make it. Like in, in basketball and football, you can kind of get away with it even yeah. if you don't like it. I, I've got, a, really lot good of, too, I've got yeah. a lot of NBA friends that hate basketball. They yeah. hate playing it. Like they've hated it since a kid. They're just seven foot tall. And they're really good at it. And they're really good at it. Yeah. So they're like, fuck it. I might yeah. as well. You know, they're going to pay me to play a game. Like, hell yeah. You're not getting hurt. With shit. fighting, you can't do that. You know, you, you, you're going to take damage. Different animal. It's 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 a, t- it's a complete different animal. And if you lie to yourself, it's going to come out in that cage. Agree, man. Uh, so I, I think the more that money gets involved into it, the more exposure that it gets, uh, the more they market the right fighters, the the more we'll be able to steal a little bit from from even from boxing. You know, the black community is kind of still stuck on boxing a little bit more. Yeah, same big. same way with the Mexican community yeah, too, a sure. little bit. Uh, but the more we market it, the more we get out there, the more that we uh, uh, show that we stars, then the, the more it's gonna come. Well, damn man, sounds like the UFC needs to listen to you a little more. Then. I'm trying, man. Look, look, one way or another, you know, they better get they this better, man they in there. Don't. Get, let them let them just work on some things. Give me the, the range. Team. Give me some bread. I will flip it and make, uh, I'm telling you. <laughs> Look, flip and make it triple. <laughs> Where do you go from here, man? We'll get you out of here. Uh, I, you know, as I'm in LA for a few days, I'm gonna do some training. Uh, get to see some other coaches. Get to see some other looks. You know, we, we, we'll see. Especially with Bellator being here this weekend, I'm gonna be in, in the building for that one. Definitely got to see Chael and, and Rampage. Got to see Roy and Lima too. I'm, That's I'm excited fight. about that one. That's so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the whole week, and we'll we'll see where it takes me. But you know, I got a lot of big things on the on the horizon. Just signed my deal with CAA, so uh, big look deal, out for man. your boy. Yeah, excited for you, man. Thanks for coming in, Kevin Lee. Everybody. All right, go ahead, Chin. Let's jump some fan questions. Fan questions. All right. The first one, Lossie P. If Frankie Edgar gets past Max, where does he rank in the all-time greats? Ah, oh, top five. Frankie? You look at his wins. You look, you know, the BJ Penn trilogy fights. You look at um, the Ben Hendersons where he did get screwed. You look where he did the Uriah Faber. Um, obviously, he had the hiccup against Jose Aldo, but, I mean, he's top five all-time. Top five. At MMA underscore RAR. Do you think John Jones has a chance of getting in the UFC Hall of Fame not because of dirty tests? Hell yeah. I definitely can get in. Even if he never fought again, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. You have to. Look, look at the rest of the Hall of Fames. There's some bad people in those Hall of Fames. You got one, Chin? Uh, I know you're going to cover this when it happens, but for now, House 9747, Canelo versus Triple G has to be the main topic. Who you got winning this time around? Um, God, you know, Triple G is getting older. I, I did not think Triple G fought like himself last time. I give the edge to Triple G in the rematch. Cool. Uh, at E underscore Savetovsky. Do you hate followers, Savetovsky? <laughs> um, how lit did you get after the Grammys? Oh, bro, I got lit up. 
By being lit up, I mean I was in my underwear eating a grilled cheese with tea a half an hour later because I had to be up in two hours for the airport. I got two hours of sleep. Damn, you didn't get to enjoy that then. I mean, would you have done that anyways? Would you have partied? No, I don't get down with parties. Yeah. It's a bunch of ass kisses. You want me to go? Sure. Petite Paulette 072. Brendan, after the Wilbur in Boston, what are you looking forward to most in 2018, personal or professional? Oh, um, that's a good question. I haven't really thought about it. You have a lot of stuff going on, though, right? A lot of th- stuff going on. The one TV show thing I'll be able to hopefully announce soon. Um, Stand up wise, um, ju- I just went over it last- yesterday with my agent the schedule. You know, obviously Denver this weekend, St. Louis, then we got Vancouver, then we got the Florida run. Um, we're adding um, Houston. We're adding um, Oxnard. We're adding San Jose. Um, and then there's one that they ask. It's later in the year, and it's with a special guest, and it's not Rogan. But it's a fucking good special guest. Oh, where me and him would do a show together in New York, and it would just be um, a banger. Damn. I can't say who yet, but it'd be I a banger. I hate that you can't say these things. I know. I hate it, too. Um, it'd be a crazy banger. Uh, but as far as uh, – and also stand-up, I had an interesting conversation about shooting something for stand-up. That I can't stop thinking about. So we'll see. Hmm. But really, uh, after all the profession, all that, uh, you know, my, my main goal for years has been to get a, a, a crib. So I'm going through that right now and then just spend more time with my son. Hell yeah. What else you got? Vinsanity underscore 420. I just discovered comedians in cars getting coffee. Any chance we ever see you on that seems like it's perfect for a big brown god it'd be a perfect fit right and have i seen it yes you know it was on i think crackle online all the episodes so now that's came to netflix there's no new ones on there i've seen them all wow i've literally seen all of them i saw all of them like a year ago two years ago it's one of my favorite shows of all time i would love to be on that i would that would check one off the bucket list man jay seinfeld's one of my heroes i'm obviously balls deep into cars uh, he's a Porsche I, guy too, right? Oh, he's the biggest Porsche guy you know. He's Perfect. the biggest Porsche guy in the world. Wow. He has some of the most exclusive Porsches in the world. Um, he's an absolute killer, man. Yeah. I don't know if I'm famous enough to get on that show, but yes, I would love to get on that show. <laughs> you want me to go again? Yes. Kev underscore Almonte. If Stipe's game plan is going to be to knock, oh no, is Stipe's game plan just to knock out DC? I feel like that's the only way he can win. Uh, if you're looking at it from you know his coach's angle, you're not going to out hustle out wrestle uh, DC. I can guarantee you that. I've trained with both guys. Um, so yes, being the bigger man, having that knockout power, DC does get hit. Um, I think, and and I also think you need to do it. You know, rounds one through three. I think if this fight goes past the third, that means DC's avoided the big punches. DC's using his game plan where he exhausts you. He's going to get trips. The the key to this fight too is DC in the clinch. DC in the clinch, from personal experience, is the best in the world as far as takedowns, trips, getting a single leg, getting a hold of your hips, and that's where you get an Olympian, world class, tip of the spear wrestler versus your general. College wrestler, Division One. Even though Steve Bay's Division One, you're talking light years as far as experience and technique and skill wise from Olympian to Division One. Light years. They're not even close. So DC's going to have an advantage as far as his pressure game, his wrestling, his takedowns, his cardio. But then Steve Bay has that huge X factor of being. You know, he's a very good athlete. He hits hard. He has a chin, and he's the bigger guy. There you go. Let's do one more. You or me? Uh, I'll do one. You do one. So okay. this at Ivan M uh, eight eight Big Brown. How many pay per view buys will the two twenty three card in July get if they have those three champion versus championship matchups? I think over a million. I think that does over a million. I think it's right around a million nine hundred to one point two million. If all of them are on there, 
Hopefully. God, you imagine that thing only does like 600, 700. Do we know how much UFC 220 did? I don't Boston? think it came out yet. Have, is that still not out? I'd be interested in see, And that, that's going to predicate, you know, also my numbers on there. But I'm hoping over a million because Super Fight in July, it's big. But if that thing doesn't do well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Yeah, nothing yet. Um, I had one here. Okay, so jason.m.w. What benefits the UFC more, Stipe win or DC? What was the question? Who do you think the winner would benefit more? I mean, who would the UFC benefit more from winning, Stipe or DC? Stipe. Because DC wins and just dips out. Uh, Stipe wins, and then they have a super fight with Kane. DC wins. Oh, yeah. They're just like, all right, cool. We vacated the light heavyweight and heavyweight belt. So <laughs> yeah. those are both empty. If, DC, if Stipe wins, like, yeah, he is the greatest of all time. And then here's also Kane. And mm-hmm. then he retires. Gotcha. So, boom. Thank you guys for listening. Great questions. This is, you know, you guys send, I think we had 1,500 questions, some shit like that. So we tried to just knock them out like that. It's pretty raw, real, but uh, I feel like that's the best way instead of just, you know, how we used to do them. So thank you guys for sending the questions. We will take the answer even more than that, but I got to get going, guys. So um, hopefully you enjoyed Kevin Lee. Shout out to Kevin Lee for coming on the show. Love that guy. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for the YouTube subscriptions. The the podcast it keeps growing every month, so things are good, and that's because of you guys. Telling a friend, telling a friend's sister who tells her sister who tells her UPS driver, and here we are. Um, Denver, I will see you tomorrow night, Wednesday. Wednesday night, there are less than – 40 tickets left or some shit like that. But uh, Denver, Mama, I'm coming home. It's my hometown. Thursday night show is sold out. St. Louis, you are up Friday and Saturday. Two shows each night at the Helium in St. Louis. And then uh, the end of the month, February 23 through the 25th, I'm in La Jolla, which is San Diego. Basically, the comedy store in La Jolla, 23 through the 25th. Get your tickets down there all weekend. Those are also selling great as well. And then uh, March First, I'm in Vancouver. That show is sold out. But the March 2nd show with Brian and myself, Fire Kid Live, still has tickets available. And then end of March, I am in Florida. Orlando will be going on sale very soon. I, I see the messages. Don't worry. It's, it, it is happening. It's Sunday night. But the th- uh, I go Tampa, and then I'm in Palm Beach, and then that Sunday, I'm in Orlando. So Florida, I'm coming. See you guys soon. Tickets available at tfatk.com. Thank you guys for listening. I love you guys as usual. Bigger, browner, batter. I'm out.